Welcome, Achievers, to your Easy Achievers Game Podcast for the week of September 29th, very close to October. I'm one of your hosts, Elijah. On episode 140, sitting across from me this week, saving my ass, Emma Walkers Jr., how are you? Well, we've been spending most of our life living in a gamer's paradise, so happy to return to said paradise. <laughs> Rest in peace, of course, Coolio. Coolio. Uh, yes. Very sad to see him. Completely forgot he was on Keenan and Kel's theme song. Thank you for reminding me about that in your tweet. Oh, uh, yeah. When he passed. That's, completely forgot. Yeah, I, that was the one of the biggest nostalgia trips I've ever had in my life, is seeing that incredible theme again. So, I love it. I, I, I oh, definitely I miss him. I, I It's way too young. 59. That is incredibly sad, and this is kind of going to be a shad show, so fucking buckle in, everybody. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of deaths today. Yeah, sadly. multiple different ways. Um, yeah. Stranger Paradise. Just I'm going to listen to that today, just think about it. Uh, anyways, that's a rapid rapid fire. Near Tom and Anime begins airing January 2023. That's probably the fastest that me and Emmett has ever started a show, by the way. Oh, yeah. Netflix has founded Welcome. an internal game studio in Helsinki, uh, Finland. Uh, Marco Lestica will serve as studio director. Marco is an almost 20-year veteran. With his most notable roles being GM and executive producer at EA Helsinki and VP at Zynga Helsinki. Mm. So they're going to try and stick with games. We'll see if they are Google going to Google it later. Nah, we'll see. <laughs> Intel debuted the graphics card. NVIDIA also debuted their new 4000 series of GPUs as well. Go check those out. The Intel's, I uh, forget what they're called, but go check out if you care about the GPUs of Intel. Uh, so there'll be a new rival, although I don't think uh, they will be any relevant right now, at least. And of course, yeah. NVIDIA have the one of the biggest things I've ever seen in my life that's supposed to go into a computer, the 4090. Things, the thing looks like a phone book. Yeah, they all cost seven kidneys each. Yes, yeah, yeah. And not yours, it has to be someone else's. <laughs> Sega to make their first blockchain game. This will be a partnership with Double Jump Tokyo. This was literally going live as we were going live as well. I have no other information to give to you guys, unfortunately. But look into it. Um, I might have a full write-up next week. It's one of those things where it's like it's so early in development, I don't really care to report on it. I just thought it was noteworthy that Sega is looking into blockchain. Yeah. E3, we promise it's not dead because the dates were announced. June 11th, June 12th are pre-show. June 13th to June 15th are business days. And then June 15th to the 16th will be open to general public. So the general public still welcome, even though they are acquired by the same people who I, who I believe do PAX West, I think. So they're, mm. they're, they're still trucking along. We'll see how long this lasts. I don't see them being as such a bad spot now, seemingly being taken... Seemingly, at least from the outside, being taken over from the same yeah. uh, group that handles the PAX events. And as far as I understand, never been to one, but those are apparently really good. So, Yeah, those are run well, and plus is a good setup to kind of hit the complaints of the press and the public. So yep. hopefully this will be a better balance. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, I feel like that breakdown of business days are full on like, hey, go there. This will just be for you. And then 15, 16, don't come, probably, is like what they're saying. Don't come. We'll have all that pre-show stuff. Go. I forget what it's called, but they have like that pre E3 thing that they all do even before yeah. the shows even go. So they'll probably be. It's usually like the mixtures, the socializing and stuff before you're yep. actually doing work. So, yep. boom. VGC has a great interview with Team Ninja's Fumihiko Yasuda and Masaki Yamagiwa. I want to everyone to go read this because, first off, it was very fascinating to hear about Team Ninja's group. Uh, I. Took a few uh, takeaways that I want to quickly go over. Uh, they teased the multiplayer in Wulong. We already knew about this, but they couldn't give anyone the information. They just said that there will be some sort of multiplayer going. When asked if he would be open to outsourcing a new Ninja Gaiden game, or would he work on it internally, he said, quote, What I want to say is, if we were to theoretically work with another company on a new Ninja Gaiden game, we would need to make sure that it would be a title that the fans would really enjoy and exceed their expectations. It's not just a matter of, hey, let's just do this. All the pieces would need to fit. And it would need to be the right team, either a younger team internally or another company that would really need to fit the Ninja Gaiden pedigree, end quote. He also later went on to say there is no chance of Neo coming to Xbox in a question posed to him, uh, very much saying it is impossible because probably prior agreements with PlayStation. We will most likely never see those titles on an Xbox platform unless something changes. 
quickly, I want to go over Ninja Gaiden. I love this franchise. Very sad that we have not seen anything since Ninja Gaiden 3. We recently had the collection of all three games, which was cool, but it didn't feel great. I was like, eh, I want a new game. Like this, as we're seeing this resurgent, of course, from, from software and then games and souls like genre, I want to see Ninja Gaiden as like a relevant title and IP again. And it makes me sad that Team Ninja seems to not really care about Ninja Gaiden anymore. And I guess I get it because they have Neo. Uh, they. It probably in their minds made Ninja Gaiden but better in Neo, but it makes mm. me sad. I feel like the design priorities of a Ninja Gaiden, as someone who is now only recently playing those games, I feel like the design priorities of a Ninja Gaiden feels old school in a way that isn't as marketable. Yeah. It isn't as like in the same way that God of War, you're not double jumping with the yeah. knockdown down isometric camera anymore. It's all behind the shoulder, you know, that type of stuff. So I don't blame them for that, but I would really love to see a Ninja Gaiden, even if it is like a double A entry or something like that. Yeah. I'd love to see another one because those games can still be fun nowadays and people still make games like that that are fun nowadays. Look at Bayonetta, look at uh, Devil May Cry 5. Like You can make a modern one of those and have it still hit. So I, I, I heavily agree. I would love to see something that way. And they later uh, on the interview at VGC, um, I believe it was Andy Robinson, he brought up the open world nature of that affected... Uh, their development of either Wulong or Rise of the Ronin. And I love that he basically was like, like, yeah, we, you know, we enjoy those games, but we want to stick to like a mission to mission format. And I was like, yes, not everything has to be open world. I'm glad he pretty much like hit the nail on the head there. And that makes me even more excited for them to eventually make a Ninja Gaiden, but it seems to not be in the cards. At least not soon. What do you want? My puppy is very loud today. <laughs> Not much else was given to this, but a 17-year-old was arrested in Oxfordshire, England, in suspected connection to the Rockstar League. Um, it seems to literally be everything that prior people talked about in the same kind of hacking forums that they're in. So it seems that they probably found this person almost instantly. So apparently it was relatively easy for them to find. Uh, I imagine this is going to not be good for him. Yep, should have used that NordVPN. <laughs> Announcing today's sponsor, NordVPN. No, 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 of course not. <laughs> if only. Axios had an interview with a Nintendo QA tester that had a labor complaint back in April. Stated that, that when they were in a uh, company meeting, Mackenzie Clifton, of course the QA in question, asked Doug Bowser, head of Nintendo America, in a meeting about the potential of unionization after calls in the industry have been in uh, the in a broader topic in the recent years. And she stated she was fired the next month for bringing it up. Um, this was quite surprising to read. First off, uh, good on her for having uh, the gall to ask Doug Bowser directly about unionization. But unfortunately, it does seem that timing is very interesting that she just literally got fired. I, I think I believe she asked about it in January and was fired in February. So seems no. seems probably those two things are leaked or sorry, are linked. And on top of that, the the her manager went to her after the call and uh, she said he stated uh, something along the lines of uh, that was a downer question. And she, she also stated that he said to run by uh, the questions to him next time she has uh, something to ask to Bowser, which I was like, oof, oof, rough stuff. So unfortunate I mean, to her. I'm glad that this is getting out there. Uh, if this is true, uh, that's fucked. That Nintendo just threw us like, yeah, just get rid of her. Um, that makes them look bad. Uh, but of course, in the sphere that we hand, have, uh, especially with laws in place, they could almost have any reason to fire her. Although, I don't know. if She, she may have a wrongful um, fire case on her. I don't know if she'll ever pursue that, though. Yeah, they they tried to cite some other reason that she was leaking like confidential information. Oh yeah, 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 she, look, that's true. Look back yeah. at the tweet, and it's the most innocuous, yeah. non. She said, "I think thing. the color red or something," and and then like, yeah, which I'm like, yeah, Just, that's. Yeah. I'm sure they have something in the code of conduct that's like, oh, we can fire her now. So and then they got rid of her. Unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully this becomes a bigger thing that Nintendo has to actually handle head on. And there's like a whole case where they're in the news for a long time with this thing. Because out of all the companies this could happen to, it's not an Activision, it's not a Ubisoft where they already have bad press and we already, they have a stigma. Nintendo is 
everyone's they're Disney without the like corporate overlordy undertones that people have with Disney. From from what I've Nin- gathered, Nintendo mm-hmm. is a great place to work at. Again, this is all tangentially through people saying that. But apparently mm-hmm. I've talked to multiple people both in the industry and people you don't think about. Uh, when I used to work at GameStop, the rep from Nintendo that would come and look at like the advertising and things like that. She said she always loved her job. She had been working there like 20 years. So that's just from one aspect. But as far as I understand, people like it there. But if this yeah, is true, I, that's well, that's damning. People like it there, but they've also Nintendo has gotten a reputation over the last few years of kind of ruling with an iron fist. Yeah, where that's true. If you if you follow the if you follow all the protocols, then you're good. But if you raise a question or if you propose something that they're not okay with, they will bring down the hammer. It seems so. Uh, yeah, hopefully this leads them to being known in the press more for you know the fact that they are just a whole corporation rather than the people who make our dreams. <laughs> <laughs> like, I feel like that's all Nintendo's known for. And it's kind of unfair when we look at all these other corporations as corporations. So, um, yeah, I mean, ho- w- the conversation has become picking up more steam in the gaming industry as far as unionization goes. And this is just another step in that process of what I feel is an inevitability. So we'll see. Well said. This next one is a perfect example of something I don't want to do a write up on because one, it's tangentially related to gaming. And two, the write-up would be just me rewriting the article, so I would rather just give them credit and read from their spoken word. So Games and Shop Bit reports on this. This is by Brendan Sinclair. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know if you've uh, heard, but in the news recently, there was contention on the potential of specifically girls who code books being banned from specific school districts via a secondary, almost um, PTA-like group. That was influencing the school district. So let's uh let's pick up on uh, basically that article. So, Girls Who Code founder Rejma Sanjani raised attention to the update over the weekend, posting on Twitter, "Quote: I woke up this morning to a news alert that our Girls Who Code middle grade book series was banned by some school districts as part of the Mom for Liberty effort to ban books. Uh, to be honest, I'm so angry I cannot breathe." End quote. The four go- girls who code books on the PEN America list include Team BFF Race to the Finish by Stacia Detched, The Friendship Code by Stacia Detched, Spotlight on Coding Club by Michelle Schusterman, Schusterman and Lights Music Code by Joe Widermore. Business Insider published an interview with Sanji about the update yesterday and the school district responding this morning. Quote, the district was recently made aware of a national article published last evening falsely claiming that Central York School District has banned the book series Girls Who Code. School district said in a notice on its website, quote, the information published in this article is categorically false. This book series has not been banned and they remain available in our libraries, end quote. Uh, they reached out to the um, district. Don't know what this is about, so I have to read it because it's, it comes out of nowhere. The representative told us that after the murder of George Floyd in 2020, the school district prepared a diversity resource list that teachers could use in the classroom. Uh, what does that have to do with this? During discussion prior to the vote, one attendee told the board a story about her daughter watching a movie in class saying, quote, I don't want to get into details of it, but she came out of the class feeling guilty she was white. So, okay, we're getting into a very interesting thing now. Okay, so and some other things that came out of that movie that can create division, end quote. Uh, what? Uh, okay, this article seemed to have turned a right corner. I'm trying to see what has anything this has to do with. It seems, it seems like when they reached out to the representative, they told them about the George Floyd thing to kind of just provide another like, hey, we didn't ban these books. Here's another good thing we did also with this whole, you know, make, giving this, this list pan- of, uh, what is it? Yeah, giving a diversity resource list that teachers use in the classroom. So I guess they provided that information, but then it seems like maybe they did further research to find out that a district meeting kind of like decided to remove that resource list anyway. Okay. And after after this incident with this young lady saying she felt guilty for being white, that's what I'm inferring from how this that seems was. like it. We just took such a fast right turn on from literally in two sentences. The book series has not been banned. We reached out to the district and the representative told us after the murder of Joy Floyd, I'm like, whoa, we got to like, we got to like work up to this. This is like just came out of nowhere. Holy shit. Anyways, uh, this is also important to know. Uh, While the removal of the list was passed, so apparently they had this list. They they like you said, 
got it passed that they then removed it, and an exemption was made allowing resources already in place to continue to be used. The, direct, the district representative told us all four go, girls who code were already in school libraries and remained available for students as a result. Okay, so it looks like they had this list. Everything that's already in the libraries basically were meant to stay. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've seen, I've seen, if not laws, then just like orders and things like this, similar to the situation where, you know, with, with people being all nervous about, you know, CRT and all that yes. stuff, people are like, oh, man, you're teaching my kid how to look at the world in a way that I didn't have to think about. And that makes me nervous. So I'm going to make sure no one has experienced that. And so, but a lot of the time they target these books that are more relating to race relations, more like social issues and yeah. gender issues. Going for go girls who code is just, it's it's just a step too cartoonishly evil yeah. to where I don't think they would be going out for that. Because at that point, it's like, you're saying women can't be in STEM. Mm -hmm. That's like literally, <laughs> that's like literally a thing that, you know, people fight for, people, you know, advocate for. So to fight against that, there's really no... Yes, the whole idea of like, you know, women's rights is a thing that people aren't fighting for like that on certain sides of the political establishment anyway, but usually they don't start with the kids in this way. <laughs> so, I agreed. Yeah. I, I don't see. Hopefully this is all correct. I don't see them literally being like, huh, let's. And, and of course, and all of everyone, Pennsylvania, just so random that that is just like, yeah, yeah, we're going to take off girls of code. So it looks like that isn't true. So hopefully um, the original author goes back and uh, at least clarifies that it wasn't that true or, or I don't know if they have if they've talked to them, but uh, hopefully they and it does show that maybe she should have reached out prior because that's a huge jump from like, oh, they banned my books and like, no, we didn't. The fuck. So it looks like the banning of the list, maybe someone heard that and then told her that it was banned. I don't know, but seems like it is yeah. at least handled something is definitely lost in translation here but it seems like everything is back to neutral i don't want to say normal but things are at least neutral to where they were before this controversy it seems so yeah we'll see and to end the central york school district of directors voted unanimously to reinstate that diversity resource list that was previously been removed so i imagine after a bit of pressure they were like eh, maybe we should keep this yep there we go that's why you got to keep the pressure up. This week, I have two questions for Emmett Watkins Jr. Of course, we're going to get to the one that everyone wants to know. But second, I'm going to get to first. And that's, of course, The Last of Us HBO show had a trailer. First off, did you watch it? Second, what were your thoughts if you did? Uh, I did watch the trailer. That is a true fact. Um, what did I think? I thought I thought this about the show forever, and this trailer just further solidified it. This show is going to be massive in a way that has me excited to like watch TV with my family again, because back with walking dead season one, I had, cause here's the thing. My family have been on a different wavelength when it comes to art entirely for my entire life. Just about, they don't play video games, so they don't get any of that. A lot of movies I like, they don't care about, like we don't often agree with stuff, but walking dead season one had everybody on or season one, my dad and my little brother were good. And then season two, Little sister and my mom were on there, and it was a family affair every Sunday we were That's going cool. in. We did that for the first, like, four seasons. And then by the time Negan, Negan came around and did what he did to certain characters, we were all... I was checked out, and we eventually all floated off yep. on that. That's literally but the I, moment I did, too. It, nothing mm -hmm. to say about that yeah. specific event. I was already waning. And then watching that, and that such a serious thing happening, and me basically going, all right. And then, and then, so like, I was like, I'm done with the show. <laughs> yeah. I didn't even go all right because they had already fucked me up with a Beth related scene. Oh, like, yeah. That was. Ahead of time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then once that happened, I was like, I can't take this heartbreak anymore. I can't fall in love with these people just to have them die two seasons later. Um, anywho, Last of Us TV show seems like it's going to be a high enough quality and a big enough like event around the world that perhaps my parents will find out about it and be interested so I can be like, hey, let's all watch this together, y'all. And now, you know, it's a different time frame. My sister lives in Florida now, um, which I should call her because Ivan's actually she's not in the path of Ivan. Anyway, sister lives in Florida now. Little brother's at college. You know, it's just me and the folks here. 
But I feel like this give me an event where we can all talk about it. We all have things to say in a similar way where I didn't care about Marvel, but my parents took us to see Avengers, the first one, because it was just a big deal and everyone was talking about it. And so, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited for this to be a cultural event <laughs> more than cool. I am about the show at this point. I have to kind of agree. Um, so I don't have a, a quite that background. I actually am into video games because of my father and we would play them all the time. Mm. So we always kind of shared interests. I you know, Lost, Walking Dead, these are all things that we all watch together. So we usually had similar interests in, in terms of showing, but I will say I am excited for the rest of the family to hopefully also watch this because it's always just me and my dad. So I'm, I'm excited for maybe my stepmom, maybe my little sisters, maybe my little brother watching this thing. Like I'm excited for like the extended family to hopefully maybe get into this just so I have a, another thing to talk about. Like, oh yeah, did you watch the latest episode? Similar to Game of Thrones in its heyday where it was like oh you always kind of had something to talk about and this is one of them so it's very cool i have like a similar interest uh just speaking yeah. very quickly on the quality of the trailer it all looks good i mean it straight up looks like the game so yeah it looks like neil Druckmann was very serious on like making sure this was of quality i imagine he is a perfectionist so if he was actually able to get sign off on everything i'm pretty excited for what this is I am surprised that it seems like the first game is the first season. And if that's true, that would be very interesting. I don't know if that's entirely the case, because I don't know how far they're going to get into it. Because if the entire first game is the entire first season, that's a lot of ground to cover. Yeah. Sure, they have like eight hours, maybe, maybe ten. But still, that's a lot of ground to cover. It does seem like they're going to fill some of that ground even further with uh i saw riley in there on i saw riley yeah go around yeah and honestly i saw riley started tearing up a yeah me bit. too i was like oh no um, it's gonna happen yeah. again and so it, they're just gonna do a lot in this show um the thing that makes me nervous or hopefully what i hope this is i hope it's not a season one season two thing i hope i mean craig math craig is it mazin or mason i'm pretty sure it's mazin i think so Craig mazin is the showrunner you know person behind the show alongside neil druckman he made uh chernobyl one of the greatest yes. singular that there's no season two for chernobyl the whole thing happened <laughs> that was perfect imagine so if, if there was that oh god we're about to get enough well let me not even make that joke um yeah yeah um <laughs> but yeah there's there's a whole other if they just make this this whole series here and the series is just the last of us and that's it that's cool and if they make a season two, I don't want it to be, here's another iteration. I want it to be, here is The Last of Us 2 yeah. as this season. So we'll see. We'll see. The The latest event I saw was, not to spoil too, too much, but the snow section, the winter section of the game, which is pretty mm -hmm. close to the end. So I'm very curious if maybe that's where they end the season and we pick up from there in the next season. I don't know. We'll have to see. Very excited, though, for the show. Certainly, certainly. Now to the other question. Of course, I pose every single week to my co-host, and this is, of course, Emmett. What have you been playing? Been playing a handful of things. I've been on my toes, on my feet a lot. Uh, recently, just recorded a little uh, Let's Play last night with some of the other VGU folks over at the site. Uh, Video Game Utopia, uh, VGU.TV. Don't type all that out. Um, we played some Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge. That's cool. First time trying it. Um, that game is pretty cool. Very great animations. Just the, it's a very, it feels like a very complete product, despite it even being what four hours long. It's very short, um, and it's very small scope. But what it is, it's like pretty much perfect at doing as being a beat beat 'em up and everything. Online multiplayer connectivity sucks though. It took us. Does it? We played. Yeah, we played for like maybe two and a half hours. 45 minutes at least of that was just trying to get us all in the lobby. Oh my stadium. God, that's ridiculous. What so platform? Got... Oh, this is on Xbox. It's on Game Pass. So we were all on Xbox. Okay. But it was just infinite bootloads where wow. someone would load in. And we'd be like, we can see you in here, but on their screen, the turtle is still loading at the bottom. And then they get kicked out after a couple minutes. So it's like, well, <laughs> wow. Great. So yeah, that's that's the most recent thing I've been playing with. Um, I've been getting into some other stuff. I, I, I did my little Xbox Game Pass thing, so I'm scrolling through my list of things I've played, and it's just like, oh, you played a minute of this just because I just booted it up to complete a Game Pass quest. Um, <laughs> I've been playing 
on Steam Deck, I've been playing a lot of Forgive Me Father, which is a indie shooter. Some would say a boomer shooter, I guess. Uh, and it's really cool. Basically, you're mm-hmm. like in this small town. It's like the small town haunted, like eldritch horror type of first person shooter. And it's the typical boomer shooter stuff where you're walking around, you're seeing secrets if you break down the right walls or if you go around the corner that is in the darkness. Uh, and you're going around shooting enemies. They give you a bunch of cool weapons. They give you, you know, your pistol, your shotgun, your ancient rifle. But then they also have these crazy powers that are fueled by your madness level. And you get more madness, the more blood of the enemies gets on you. So when you go on a big rampage, everything goes black and white and all you see is red. It's um, it's fun. Uh, I got it through the Humble Choice uh bundle for this month so i was like oh, okay i'll see what's up with that and it runs really well on steam deck so yeah that's it and is there anything else i really oh ninja gaiden we talked about ninja gaiden earlier been yep. playing that a lot fuck that game <laughs> yeah so the first one <laughs> yeah yeah the first one um i had never played them back when they were coming out so i got the collection recently through game pass and tried it out and yeah that first ninja gaiden game it's i it feels good when i overcome but god Damn it. It is. I know exactly. Grueling. Yeah, it's very grueling. And also, if I remember correctly, I tried playing that um, in the re-release. Not only is the gameplay uh, good, I remember the camera being a bit of an issue as well. Um, and they didn't really fix that issue with the re-release, which was very disappointing. Um, no. And that was always a problem with that game. And it just, it, they just didn't do anything with it. And, and it gets frustrating when you feel like a death is unfair. I actually got about halfway to the game and after a point, I was like, all right, that's enough. Because yeah. they didn't fix it, and I was just hey, I don't really want to get aggravated. I'd rather spend that time on two. So I would actually recommend if you if you kind of fall out, jump to two and just see if... if Because that, that's a bit better, although the camera isn't great. It's, it is a little bit better, and I feel like two is the superior Ninja Gaiden game. Um, okay. Probably out of all yeah. of them. Two was actually the first one I played, and I was interested in the franchise after playing two but i said oh, let me go back to one and yeah one i was having a lot of fun and i i still am having fun to a certain degree but it's just getting to a certain point where first off didn't realize all the health upgrades and uh chi or key upgrades you're getting they all just go into your inventory they don't apply to your yeah. character so uh, i got that's true throughout the franchise too oh god okay so i have to remember that for two but like five hours in almost and i haven't I have my health is the same as level one, everything. And so I finally used all that stuff thinking I could finally get through this next boss. The boss is working me like even with like 50 percent extra health, the boss is just destroying me. So I got to figure out what I'm going to do. Um, I want to I feel like I can beat it, but I really do think I might take your advice and just skip it too because it's too much. What is funny is, um, especially in two, you can actually use that to your advantage and use it as a heal so in two that was kind of my little hack that i developed when i was playing it back in 2009 when it came out or something whenever it came i don't remember but when i was playing on 360 me and my dad figured out that oh you can use your health upgrades for a full heal at any time so i would actually get them and make sure to use them as like my first heal in a boss fight so like i would like if i got low open inventory eat a uh I think they're spirit beads, the spirit, like a uh, spirit beads or whatever yeah, they're called. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. a string of like the nine beads. Yeah, right? yeah. So, and then you'd eat it full heal. Keep going. Yep. Here's the problem though. In the Sigma version of Ninja Guide one, that is not the case. Yep. I ate all those beads and it gave me a long ass bar with a big ass chunk missing. Yep. <laughs> yep. So whoop de doo. Gotta love it. I spent but the yeah, majority that, that of my time finishing up a long forgotten platinum that I needed to finish after, mm-hmm. of course I, Platinum Last of Us Part 1. I said I have to do it. I went and finished out my Last of Us Part 2 Platinum that I still had remaining from 2020 when it came out. So I finished that. It was it was very nice. All I had to do was get the upgrades for both characters and um uh both guns and the upgrades for both characters. So I finished that. That was actually a little more time consuming than I wanted it to, but I just wanted it done. So it's done. So I've almost have every platinum for every Naughty Dog game. I'm missing Uncharted 4 and Lost Legacy. That will be my next accomplishments. Whenever well, I get it around to that one, two, three. Uh sorry, modern. I meant to add modern. Okay. Modern Ooh, Naughty Dog. I was about to say. <laughs> sorry. Jack one and two. God damn. <laughs> I meant to say modern as in basically Uncharted one on. But I am uh, missing, uh, of course, four and Lost Legacy. Which are, it's just one of those, again, it's time consuming, so I just gotta sit there and do it. 
Uh, aside from that, a little more Bayonetta, not too, too much. I played a little bit more of that. Having fun. I'm having a great time. It's scratching the DMC itch that I don't really get from too many games other than DMC. So it is actually really nice to play. And damn, does it feel cool when I summon the demon hands. My God, it's so yes. satisfying when you get a good combo oh, going. You're going to see so much more of that. I will say real quick, another DMC like as well that is on the indie side that people might like, uh, Ultra Age. It is on Steam and it's on PlayStation 4. Um, I played a little bit of that. It's very good. It kind of does the Breath of the Wild thing where your weapons break, but they do an ultimate attack when they break. So it's like it's like a strategic thing rather than just an annoying way for your enemies, for your weapons to break. And you also get like 30 copies of the weapon. So it's not like you're losing out on a weapon when you actually shatter it. It's more of a expending ammo type thing. So definitely yeah, check not that expecting... out. I that game. Definitely not expecting how pretty the game is. Just a quick, oh, just a quick uh, trailer auto playing on Steam. Like this looks actually surprisingly good. It reminds me of a realistic. Um... Oh, I just blanked on the name. A realistic mod for like, something? No, it, yeah, for like Nexus uh, code. That's not the name of the game. But... Nexus mods? No. Ne oh, wait. Scarlet it's... Nexus? No. Oh yes, thank you. Yes, Scarlet Nexus. Thank you so much. Yep. It looks kind of like that. It reminds me of that, except there's no like people with you. But that looks damn, that looks actually really cool. I actually might check this out. Always yeah. find a new game with you. Yeah. Always happy to help. <laughs> Rumor roundup for the week is relatively quick. Uh as there's only two news stories to talk about. The long heavily long and heavily rumored Silent Hill title is now undoubtedly true as we see it getting raided in South Korea. Its name is Silent Hill the Short Message, which given the name will be a new game in the series. And, of course, is not the other rumored Silent Hill title, of course, being Silent Hill 2 Remake. Uniana seems to be publishing the title. Hmm. Ah, short message. So, I'm assuming, given the name, this would just be kind of a quick experience. Maybe even PT-like, just kind of, like, incentivize people to maybe get excited for a new game. And then Certainly. they have Silent Hill 2 Remake ready. I, I am curious when this is going to happen as we've been hearing this for almost two years now so i'm is there have a feeling is konami just gonna fun. drop this somewhere because i thought actually they'd be doing this at tgs but that's long gone now so here's the feeling i have based off of the next rumor roundup that we're going to talk about and the fact that we don't really know much of what sony's doing after you know god of war comes out in november yeah, you know after november it. yep yeah, we got we got we're long story short, we're in need of another PlayStation showcase. I have a pretty good feeling that it's coming somewhat soon. Um, now that the Silent Hill thing has been rated, I'm sure that's coming within the next few weeks, if not a few months. Um, so we're going to be seeing all this come together in one event. Uh, I When is that going to happen? I feel like it should happen in October. It's perfect time for it. We already got a bunch of games getting random reveals this October. We had, or recently, what's the uh, Japanese EA Monster Oh, not um... Game? Ooh, Wild Hearts. Wild Hearts. Yeah. Yeah, that just got a reveal trailer, and there's really heavily pointing rumors that the new Need for Speed's getting revealed pretty yep. soon, because Heat just went on super, super discount, so... Yeah, we're we're gonna see a lot of stuff pretty soon. I feel like people we're right in that time zone where people are marketing for the fall games very soon, but also there's a lot of like hangover for yep. E3 season that people didn't get to talk about yet. Yes, so, yeah, yeah. I think you bring a, a a good idea. I wouldn't be shocked actually if they wait till either right on or right after God of War's release just to make sure that it's focused. Then we get maybe a late November, mid December showcase talking maybe a little bit about VR, PSVR, maybe, who knows? Or it's just like, hey, this is what the next year of PlayStation looks like. And we already know, well, rumored heavily that Silent Hill 2 Remake is PlayStation exclusive. So maybe yeah. this is, well, maybe Short Message is a VR title for PSVR 2. Who knows? This oh is all purely God. speculation, but. That's a power move. We'll see, though. Yeah. <laughs> Gameplay of Returnal on PC is leaked from Icon Era on YouTube, showing a large number of improvements in line with other PC releases. Of course, this is not too much of a surprise as it was on the NVIDIA leak. So this is pretty much a go. I'm sure this is going to come out soon. Now it is much more obvious the large number that was on the internal uh, estimations for their PC 
if you remember uh 300 million dollars is how much they wanted to make on their pc re-releases it looks like they were going where i thought it was quality over quantity it is quantity over quality as they're just they're just have this at such a rapid pace that I'd these are uh, both eh, okay <laughs> i would also argue both because the games are good i just thought uh, this is actually me speaking to my prior assessment that Spider-Man would be the brunt of that and potentially a day and date title. Of course, mm. it, I was incredibly wrong as all of their games are pretty much they're pretty much catching up on their backlog of. All right. Yeah, let's start getting these all PC. And I was incorrect that Spider-Man would be so big on PC. It actually was a little off. It only sold a bit better than God of War, but. It looks like it is. God of War, Spider Man, and Returnal, and oh, you know, it's just up and up and up as multiple titles rather than yeah, four, three or four huge titles. And again, we recently are getting or we're no, is it out already? The Uncharted. That's coming out this month as well. This month, God, that's yeah, that's three or this coming October, I should say. Which is weird that they released that before the Nathan Drake collection on PC. Don't know what's up with that. Well, yeah. Yeah, Uncharted. The first Uncharted game you can play on PC is Four and Lost Legacy, which is terrible. That is an awful yeah. idea. If you are out there and you've not played them, wait, do not buy it, please. Yeah, uh, play four. Lost Legacy if you want, but everything else, nah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, I actually agree with that. Yeah, play Lost Legacy, but please do not play Four without playing any of them. This sounds awful. It means nothing to you. Ugh. Exactly. Exactly. And also, we didn't. I, I think this is going to be later in the show. I'm not sure, but please go ahead. Little Big Planet, uh, yes. Sackboy's Big Adventure coming to PC. I actually well. had that at date update because that was something we did prior last week, I believe. But let's go ahead and cover it now because it is relevant. Sackboy, a big adventure, is coming to PC October 27th. Yet another title. So, assumably, yeah. that's going to hit, and most likely, Returnal might be the month after. So, almost uh, very, very getting into that Q4 window is. Where we're really getting a rapid PC launch, uh, releases from PlayStation. Yeah, so we're Nix is hard at work. Really hardcore. Nix yeah, is, is hard at really work. going in. Yeah, which makes me think like we're gonna run out of PS5 exclusives for them oh, to yeah. catch up on, mm -hmm. and then it's gonna be PS4 games. Then and then right there, Bloodborne maybe, and then yep. after that, PS3 games. Are you gonna try and port these resistances, these old Ratchet and Clanks, like? How far back are we going to go? It seems like they're trying to get everything on PC. I did so. think it was going to be much more of a slow drip, given, again, my how big Spider-Man would have been and, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So after a while, yeah, you're right. Like, what did they do after they're pretty much caught? I mean, they're almost caught up now. So, like, what are they going to do when they're done? Are they going to work, like you said? Like, that makes sense. Bloodborne PC release? I mean, that is just a no-brainer. I'm sure they're at least working on something Bloodborne, whether it be a new title or just a straight up port of the original game. Either one will get you big excitement. So, because again, you can still only play Bloodborne in 30 frames per second. Still, it's yeah. 2022. Yeah, cursed. But give me Steam Deck 60 frames. I'm there, buddy. Yes. Oh, here we go. We have to start the show now. And this is the beginning of the show. And of course, I have Emmett Watkins for this. Breaking news as we were preparing to go live about 10 minutes prior. It is incredibly sad that we have number one Stadia player Emmett Watkins Jr. with us today as we have unfortunate news for fans of the service. As Google announced, they will be closing Stadia January 18th, 2023. Google, in an effort to make good, has announced that they will actually be refunding. And I could be wrong about this because I was talking to Emmett prior, but they seemingly are re uh, refunding all purchases related to Stadia, which is including any hardware, games and add ons through their specific Google Stadia store. Google expects all refunds processed by mid-January. Stadia Vice President and GM Phil Harrison has a blog post detailing the closure, citing, quote, not enough traction was gained with users, end quote, and adding both the technology, uh, technology of Stadia and the employees will also be distributed throughout Google's internal team. Originally tested through a closed beta running Assassin's Creed Odyssey back in October 2018 and called Project Stream, and the publicly, uh, publicly launching on November 19th, 2019. This makes it an incredibly short-lived as they tried opening internal studios and making games and new partnerships. Of course, the recent release of The Quarry by Ready at Dawn is a perfect example as it was originally a Stadia title, meaning as early as this year, plans to close the uh, service were most likely underway. Failures can be attributed to many things as Google itself is known to do this exact strategy of making new services and closing them within a few years. Funny enough, the tech and experience was never much of an issue according to multiple people familiar with the experience, especially compared to the competition. 
but lackluster support and few exclusive incentives are multiple reasons the Beluga service will go the way of Ouya. Now, Damn. Ouya. Ouya. Now, Emmett Watkins Jr., the gods have aligned it perfectly that you, I have you, pretty much the sole person probably still using Google Stadia as the number one Stadia influencer himself. What did you make of this as you've only had about 30 minutes to process your feelings on this? About, at this point, probably about six hours ago, I was on my Steam Deck looking at this screen right here. Oh, it's going to oh, block it all up. Put it next to your, something. there you go, there you go. You put it on your, like, your chest, there you go, you see it. Yeah, we see it, Stadia. I have a shortcut to open up Stadia on my Steam Deck. <laughs> and what was I playing literally six hours ago? I was in here, I don't know. I was doing something. I was playing, first off, they just gave us Hot Wheels Unleashed Game yep. of the Year Edition claim. I saw that. So I claimed that because I didn't realize that came out. So I claimed that. But I went to go play just random shit. Panzer Dragoon remake I had on there. And I played just a couple minutes of Destroy All Humans. And I was like, all right, I got my fix. I'm going to go to bed now. And then I wake up <laughs> to this news. So here's the thing, man. I knew, all of us knew, that this was pretty much inevitable. When they pulled out first party support when they said all these studios jade raymond and all these folks are working with we're going to make yep. exclusive games when they said fuck that it was over yep and even before that when we saw or when we heard that they were paying tens of millions of dollars just to not get an exclusive to get just red dead redemption 2 or assassin's creed whatever just to get it on the platform at all not as an exclusive just so it just can so share. It was, yeah <laughs> Yeah, we knew something was fishy, and honestly, I bet you Take Two was trying to oh Google money. All right, we're gonna upcharge them for one game because they don't know how the shit works. And also, we so, don't care if it ships on there. So like, mm -hmm. who, who exactly. cares? That's actually either this is completely unrelated, but I feel like that has something to do with Square Enix. Either they are purchased or at least purchasing right now, and that's why we're seeing such a huge volume of activity from them. Or they're like, make Xbox pay for our stuff because we don't care if it ships on Xbox. So have them pay for us to make us exclusive. Going back to Stadia, of course, of course, that was uh, just an example yeah. of what they were right. doing. Yeah, like I, it got to the point devs didn't care if it launched on Stadia. So now it was on Stadia to get devs to launch their games on. It just didn't work. And, and I'm curious on what you think they did. And at the end of the day, I can't wait for a deep dive into what killed or why it died a couple things i point to first off i can't believe i, I was right although i'm not gonna pretend like i wasn't the only one here uh, just about everyone who talked about it aside from a few people that i think were just kind of hyped about it pretty much called uh this right through the middle jason schreier is one of them that i think of that pretty much since day one was like this thing is not living now i don't think anyone thought it would die after three years i thought google was definitely gonna yeah. keep this thing going for at least a decade but clearly they were like, they pulled the parachute and we're like, who cares? Leave this thing. Uh, we'll just refund everyone. And, and I really don't, we don't, we, they clearly don't, don't care at all that they tried to get this thing to work. Uh, of course, Google has dumb money. So this was probably a drop in the bucket at the end of the day uh, and a fun kind of experiment, <laughs> experiment within them. Uh, sad to see that we pretty much lost everyone involved with these projects internally pretty much for like five years. Cause that is talent that is lost seemingly coming from nothing. So yeah. that's sad to point out. Uh, I am curious at the end of the day, what the, what's going to happen with the tech. They did say it will be used for internal Google things, YouTube and such, but they did say they were open to trying to partnership with people. Very curious if that's just them fishing or if that is them like, alluding to like hey we might have a buyer or we might be able to get this off of our uh, platform and give it to someone else of course oh, i'm sure they're fishing i'm sure they're fishing i think i think it's um, more fishing i don't think they have anything lined up yeah, I, i'll tell you right now perfect scenario for me as someone who i've already said stadia the actual tech is phenomenal um i've had less latency on stadia than i had on xbox game pass and on local playstation 5 that's what i've heard yeah yeah so the tech works talk to sony and be like hey i know you you have this cloud streaming service for your ps3 games that's cool and great and all how but no, it's only streaming on a ps5 or a ps4 
Um, you have to have the hardware to be able to access these games. Don't you want to expand it? You're already on PC and you already have a somewhat dog shit PC streaming app <laughs> that people don't like. And I don't even think it's gotten a PlayStation Plus rebrand. I think I still think it's PlayStation Now on PC. But let's let's work together. We can get this thing streaming on mobile devices, on browsers, all that stuff. I really think there's potential there. Will they do it? I don't see them doing it. I don't feel like Sony. I feel like Sony has like too much pride to take Google's leftovers, even if it is food that was never touched. But I don't know. We'll we'll see. I, I think they can do that stuff. And I will say, as far as the whole refunding thing goes, I do think it's great that they're refunding anybody who bought into this ecosystem because you know, and buying into an ecosystem that only exists three years is not much of an ecosystem. No, but. I wanted, I'm wondering what they're going to do for the people who are like me because they were giving away Google Stadias for free if you had YouTube Premium. They were giving it away if you had any type of Google subscription to a thing. So I got it from there. So I doubt I'm going to get you know $70 or whatever for that because I got it free. And also, one thing that they've already confirmed they're not refunding, Stadia Pro subscriptions. Yep. They, yeah, Stadia Pro, they are... They actually had a decent library on Stadia Pro. It worked just like PlayStation Plus. If you claimed it during the month it was available, it's yours forever or three years. Um, and they had some really good games on there. They had Darksiders Genesis on there. They had Destroy All Humans. Pretty much every game except one that I have on Stadia is from holding on to that Pro subscription since 2020. And it was a good deal. And I, I played all of Wavetail through Stadia Pro, and Wavetail is a great game that will now be on other platforms. Grime is another game that will now be on other platforms. That is a really great souls like side scroller, but here we are now they're not refunding pro. So I'm out. I did the math actually, cause they show you in the settings. Um, I paid the only amount of actual money that I spent on stadia was on sale. I got ghost recon wildlands ultimate edition. Uh, and I got it for $10 off and it was already on sale. I paid two fifty for it. So <laughs> I'm All getting right. $250 back, yay. But because of the pro subscription, I'm out $148. It is unfortunate. And I, yeah. It is I unfortunate. It you, yeah, I must say, yeah, I, I, I assume you're not shocked by this. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, I do feel for people if, if, they, if they're like, wow, I, I paid for this. Um, I, I, I think that number is much lower than we probably could even guess. But at least they are refunding it. I assume they just want to make sure they're not first off looked down upon and also they probably don't even want to worry about any litigation put towards them although i don't think it would go past in court it's it, it just it just is probably easier for them to be like we're just gonna give you back if you bought games and we'll refund you if you bought any hardware and there you go and now that we're talking about it you just this just reminded me they actually announced their stadia pro games for next month like a few days ago hilarious and i was looking out and i'm like these games don't look incredible usually there's like one good game like there you go oh i don't know what any of these games are but lake i'll play or hot wheels unleash i'll play this next month had nothing super exciting so i was like huh looks sparse so yeah i'm gonna go ahead and cancel this right now while i'm thinking about four yeah. updates in october yeah and this is something that i think just everyone ever kind of saw coming i don't think anyone really is blindsided by this this is literally google i, I think the only surprise is it it didn't even make three years like it, it, it didn't even make three years, so that mm -hmm. is sad to see. As I would have preferred some sort of competition, and to bring up that the Sony maybe they would get it. Uh, just as a reminder, this could not be related, but uh, back in 2019, they did partner with Microsoft to uh, use the Azure servers to develop future cloud solutions. Um, as a clear combatantism against Google and Apple, or sorry, uh, uh Google and Amazon. So. Hmm. I don't think Sony would care uh, about this because they already have the. Hey, who knows? God knows what that partnership says. It, it could be for ten. Well, it could be for Void. Whenever it could just have been a one-time thing, and that they use their tech and figure stuff out. Clearly, Sony still on does, side. was that. They could be using it on the developer side. So. That's that too. It it could not mean much in the way of their actual tech that they're using or they're learning about it. So that's just something to bring up as. It could be it could be related, but it might not be. In and that if, case, give it to Amazon Luna because Amazon Luna's dog oh shit. God, yeah, <laughs> that's 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 scary. And I've tried. 
And as a, as a reminder, I do think uh, we are getting closer, although this is clear evidence that Google doesn't care about games now. I don't think they'll be back in the games industry probably for a long time. But it is clear now that Microsoft and PlayStation, and I, I think are kind of in a like, I prefer you and I being against each other versus the other people. Because if we have Apple and Amazon clicking on our heels, that's a much bigger deal than just Microsoft being the big guy. So I, I, if if this is any indication, maybe that's not a worry, but who knows? Yeah. I mean, we still got Netflix. They're going to be big in, in this industry somehow because, yeah. you know, story games are still a thing, and I'm sure that's where they'll focus. Um, Apple I've been nervous of, but I feel like they're going to stay in the mobile realm. I don't think they're going to try and make an Apple console again. Um, so your co-host then, on Spoonful that uh, you can get on YouTube and Pocket Services, of course, uh, put out an interesting tweet that I'll quickly go over. And he said, if um, I don't quite remember, apologies, I might grab it in a second. But he, he pretty much alluded to like I, he wonders if Apple will ever enter the industry. I would argue is if Apple ever doesn't enter the industry, they will do what everyone else did when a big tech company. And of course, Microsoft did is just buy stuff and what they will buy. Apple has so much cash on hand. That with cash, they can walk over to Sony and buy them with cash yeah. and still have plenty left. So if we if we if that ever does happen, that will be a giant shot across the entire industry that will crater anything else that happened as being probably the single biggest news event to ever happen. And if that does happen, that I I don't want app I don't really want Apple in this industry. Go look at the app store and see why. Go go Literally, look at the App Store and see why you would not want I Apple here. I can't even log into my old Apple account to get onto Apple TV Plus because they require you to have an Apple device yep. to recover your password. <laughs> what the fuck are we doing? There's a lot of dumb stuff Apple does, and they do clear monopolistic things, especially yeah. with their App Store. That's the whole reason Epic sued them in the first place. The entire reason they yeah. did is to try and break some of the barrier they have in their giant monopoly. Yeah, I definitely I don't like Apple. I don't like how their existence fucks up everything else in the market because I'm on the rest of the market, not on Apple stuff. So, yep. Yeah, I wouldn't love to see that, but we'll see. Relate to us by Game is Shoot Up is we have some worrisome news. And of course. I saw this reported on in some other places, but I did find this underreported, which is sad to see because this is big news. Saudi Arabia's public investment fund, who owns Savvy Games Group, outlined a plan to set aside a staggering $37.8 billion, that is in USD, of course, to, quote, build the country's presence in the global games industry, end quote. And even more troubling on that, $13.3 billion of that is specifically set aside for, quote, the acquisition and development of a leading game publisher to become a strategic development partner, end quote. As a reminder, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia, Mohammed bin Salman, is the chairman on the board of directors at Saudi Arabia's Public Investments Fund. In a statement, Mahad said this, quote, Saudi Games Group is one part of our ambitious strategy aiming to make Saudi Arabia the ultimate global hub for the games and esports sector by 2030. We are harnessing the untapped potential across the esports and games sector to diversify our economy, drive innovation in the sector, and further scale the entertainment and esports competition offerings across the kingdom, end quote. The, remi- king. <laughs> the kingdom. <laughs> the, rem- the remainder of this money will be used for minority investments in existing companies, diversification in the industry, and uh, diversification into the mature industry partners. The group aims to establish 250 gaming companies in Saudi Arabia, with a even more staggering number of 39,000 people employed between them. The continued the continue push into the game industry is incre- incredibly troubling, given that Muhammad is seen to have been behind the murder of journalist Jamal Khashoggi. And Saudi Arabia is an incredibly brutal, brutal country with obvious human rights abuse that you can read all about. But they regularly torture, behead, and crucify people for multiple reasons. And since they follow Shahira Laud, homosexuality is punishable by death. There is no official number, as of course they don't report on these things for obvious reasons. Now... Mm-hmm. Maybe, and I trust you, Emmett, to sway me and talk me down from the giant cliffs I walk by every day. But I do find this troubling that I find that rarely is Saudi Arabia brought up in the overall conversation in the industry. 
at least we do talk about Tencent a little bit, although it's not enough to the degree as I'd wish. But and we'll talk about Tencent later in the show. But for Saudi Arabia to openly execute people, especially yeah. gay people. I think they executed 200 people this year that were homosexuals. Mm. Horrifying. Very. I hear everyone, and again, talk me off this ledge if, if I cross the line here, but why do we get upset about J.K. Rowling saying obviously wrong things, but I don't hear really anyone talking about this? This is incredibly sad. They own SNK already, yeah. so SNK is now gone. They own 96% of that company. So that's yep. just gone now. So now I can never buy that game because I'm not giving money to these fucking people. And then two, I wish we had someone in the industry similar to um, at least uh, people got a little more educated on the Israel-Pakistan debacle when um, oh my God, I'm blanking on his name. Um, it was an event where a like that a speci- was... A, sip- a specific like person championed at least people getting informed about the situation. Regardless yes. of, and I forget his name. He works at GameSpot. Oh, uh, Tamor? Thank you, Tamor Hussein. Yeah. He was kind Tamor, of the main yeah. champion behind everyone getting at least a little more informed, whereas the game industry tends mm-hmm. to be a lot of people not really understanding history and things. At least people watch some YouTube videos to at least get some more context on, on very important situations. But this seems like an egregious miss by a lot of people in the industry really not talking about it. And we'll talk about other things that we seem to miss uh, when we bring up Tencent later. But please, um, what is your side on this and what did you make of this news? This is incredibly troubling, I think. I say this is troubling in the same way. It's troubling in a way that everyone agrees is bad, in which you got a lot of people with a lot of money looking to use just their straight-up capital to get into industries they know nothing about and possibly flunk out or make it worse. Um, so just from that standpoint, no one likes that. We don't like it when Tencent's coming in here buying everything just because they can. We don't like it when any government or any group from any country comes in and just buys up a bunch of shit because they can, because capitalism is cancer. We all know that. But when it comes to this specifically, because I agree with you, why are people looking, not looking at this story and scrutinizing it to the same degree that, you know, pops up when we talk about something like a Harry Potter game? I think the difference here is it's easy to identify the bad guy and how to win in that battle when it's one problematic person, (laughs) when it's one person who has a ultimately fairly limited scope of influence. Yes. They, you know, JK Rowling, super famous person wrote all these Harry Potter books. Yes. They have influence, but at the end of the day, their art isn't that good. (laughs) Like, yeah, Harry Potter, we all have nostalgia, but outside of that, like look at all the books she writes (laughs) under different pen names and shit. Everyone that I know, does not like those books yeah, they're or not, they're just too they're unhinged not, and really they're not really ways. good they're not really good exactly by the so way i'm I, a harry potter fan those other ones they're not good at all i've read them yeah and, and and at this point most harry potter fans are harry potter fans not jk rowling fans yeah, like that's a good most point. of them have already put her to the wayside so at a so at a certain point yes she's hateful and yes her influence is gonna push other people towards that hate but that's one isolated person where uh, someone like, let me make sure I'm getting the name right. Is it Muhammad Salman? Muhammad um, bin Salman is his full name. Yes. Or Muhammad that bin fuck Salman. is also a good one. <laughs> yeah, that, whoever, this guy is the leader of an entire, em- or. Hey, you could say empire, like, pretty much. I, I mean, the, empire, the yeah. only reason that Saudi Arabia is relevant is one natural resource that everyone in the world needs. Yeah, they, they're oil barons, and they have used and he all is, this money and capital. he is arguably the richest person in the world. I know Forbes would like you to think mm-hmm. that's Jeff Bezos. This dude dwarfs fucking Elon Musk's dollar amount by mm-hmm. several zeros. So this guy yeah, is... That ties into capitalism. This dude is, yes. More. Oh, yeah. They yeah. want to believe that the Bezos of the world have the most money so that you're like, oh, the American dream is real because in America they're rich. It's like, oh, no, if you want to, like, abuse public rights things you could really make some money in saudi arabia um but yeah i think the problem is people look at mohammed bin salman and they look at an entire kingdom that is led by a man who is clearly corrupt that clearly has issues that clearly is motivated by nothing but greed and doesn't have respect for you know some people in the in the country most people in the country i'd say at this point 
And you look at that and have a whole entire territory of folks who are, you know, killing gay people and it's socially accepted there on um, people who are, you know, bearing down under women in ways that the women don't like, like they're doing all these things. You look at an entire culture, an entire group of people are doing that. And it is harder to visualize a way forward through that. It's harder to visualize a way to stop that because yeah, you can get rid of one person, but if you have a whole country full of people who followed this person feverishly, someone's going to just pop. It's going to be reproducing, reproducing by budding. It's just going to be another clone that pops up and puts that up until you change the culture. So it's hard. And also it's hard to change that culture when a lot of people associate this stuff to like their religion, which is not something that I want to touch or anybody else wants to touch because look at Christianity. There's a lot of bad shit. We attach to Christianity, but I know plenty of Christians who aren't shitty people Yep, <laughs> who don't have shitty views. So you can separate that stuff and have it work. I will say, you're, yeah. because you brought it up, I will say I've known mo multiple Muslims. I'm, I'm no mean attacking people who follow their their religion exactly. here. And I'm also not attacking Saudi Arabians either. I'm attacking yeah. the Saudi royal family that openly executes and crucifies people in 2022 mm -hmm. for having sex with a man. Yeah. So like the, yeah. this is, we're these in like, place. they're in different, they're, these are different like universes. So I just, I wish, and I know people are going to just it's say, and I know people say. are just going to say, what about ism? It's such a lame thing to say, but I will, I just want, I just would like someone that's bigger than me to just be like, Hey, why aren't we talking about this? Similar to what uh, uh, Tamar did with uh, the plight in Israel and Pakistan. And I, I, that's all I want, because it, it, seem, it seems very troubling that we care about J.K. Rowling and not $37.8 billion being injected into the industry. Literally a third of that is to buy stuff. That's fucking I'll, scary. I'll also say that, yes, this is still troubling, but on the same token, this is less in the case of like when all the stuff was going on in Palestine earlier, that was a major political event that everyone should care about yes. because it's important for millions and millions of people. This is less of a major world event and more of a major industry event. And it's more of a case of the money is coming from a place we don't like. A it's, it feels like dirty money rather than like, yeah. oh, you're coming in and you're wanting to do something for change. No, you just see profit in the industry. And you're looking to capitalize. So from that standpoint, there are so many poison wells that are pouring water into this industry right now between Tencent and this and all these other folks from outside. You know, we... Let's not necessarily say Amazon Luna. That's not they're not doing that for altruistic purposes. They're trying to capitalize as well. Netflix as well. There's not a lot of all the big expansions that are moving into gaming right now. None of these are really pure. It's just that this one is it's impure in a way that ties into some real life, real world shit of people getting hurt. So like it's it, it's I would claim it's more serious, but I also understand why people aren't looking at this in a more maybe not fearful in a more like directly threatening way mm. because at the end of the day every every new person that's getting into games isn't here for the art form hell you could even argue microsoft playstation nintendo they're not here for the art form they're here to make money yeah so Agreed. any art that comes from that is incidental um i'm sure you know they're they're making all this thing the thing i'm more interested in is they're using all this money to get into the industry how many of these developers that, you know, people like to poach talent from all these devs, how many of them are realistically going to move to Saudi Arabia to start a new studio? That's even hear, more hilarious. 250 gaming companies in Saudi Arabia with 39,000 people. You're fucking high yeah. if you think you're getting people to move yeah. to Saudi Arabia. The, the, I, I mean, you, they will yeah. openly murder you. Like, they don't care. Mm -hmm. this, this place is not in the realm of, like, uh, most of the world is right now. Like, they're, it's fucking lawless. It's crazy. Like, so I don't, I, that was even more shocking that they think they can get 39,000 people to go work for them. You're, now they can definitely buy a company that yeah. is in Helsinki or something and just get the residuals. But at yep. the end of the day, like, especially with like the gaming industry or just like video gamers in general, I mean, gays in the word, <laughs> like there are so many people that are queer that I know that are in the industry or just fans of games 
there's no way in hell that they're going to be working with Saudi Arabia. Yeah, so, so like, that, that was also wild. Like, yeah. it, it, maybe there is a large Middle Eastern gaming presence, but I, there, I I'm, doubt I'm it. I'm sure there's a, a, a bit of a presence, but at the end of the day, like... Is it 39,000 people? We, I don't think it's 39,000 people. <laughs> and even when Tamor was telling stories on, I think it was one of the episodes of uh, GameSpot After Dark, about how one of his first introduction with games are the bootleg games that they sell in like yep. Pakistan and places yep. like that, where it's just these weird ISOs and such. And you, that has nothing to do with like, like if you played Max Payne one through a weird ISO that got burned on some disc and that's your first experience of the game. Remedy knows nothing about that. They're mm -hmm. not seeing that dollar. So they're not really necessarily thinking of the influence that comes from places like these. So, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know about this plan. Uh, it's it's definitely weird. I think once this becomes a bigger direct thing, because right now it's a threat. But yes, once like, a punch is thrown, once a punch is thrown, then people are like, oh, wait, what's going on here? I think it will get more attention as it gets more and more of an actual thing. But it's an uphill battle. And they're going to realize pretty quickly that, oh, if you're just killing homosexuals and just outright willy nilly and not even being slick about it, then yeah, people aren't going to want to work with you, let alone work in your country. So, yeah, we'll see. Well, if, see, this is, I do agree that this is, um, this is a time will tell thing. Um, mm -hmm. So we, we will have to see. 13.3 is staggering. So that, that's an easily purchasable square or something like that. So. Yeah. All right. Ooh. That was a long one. This is also another long one. So stick with me here. Twitch has seen quite the controversy these last few weeks, so let's talk about them. I find it notable to begin with gambling, and a streamer by the name of It's Slicker, fuck a terrible name, gathering the majority of the story from my Twitter and PC Gamer, it seems major allegations of It's Slicker, quote, borrowing money, end quote, air quotes for everyone at home, money, uh, money from both friends and fans alike and not paying any of them back, sparked up on Twitter. Pictures of him asking for money for things like plane tickets, bills, etc., Surface and rumors of him having a gambling addition came to light. Now, here what's make the actual major aspect to this news to make it popular. Twitch streamers Pokimane, uh, I believe that's actually Mickkiff or something. Mick, uh, I don't know this one, so I apologize if I'm mis mispronouncing it. And then Hassan Abi began campaigning for Twitch to ban gab gambling, although its slicker seemed to not actually be gambling on stream, but it seemed that this debate on Twitch allowing gambling on their site seemed to have been bubbling in the background for a long time. Uh, upon the previously named three streamers planning on striking on Twitch's most profitable days near Christmas time, we finally heard word from Twitch in a statement addressing the gambling issue in a lengthy statement put on Twitter. To spare you, I will shorten to what we need to know. Quote, we'll be making a policy update on October 18th to prohibit streaming. This is important. So listen. To prohibit streaming of gambling sites that include slots, roulettes, or dice games that aren't licensed either in the U.S. or other jurisdictions that provide su uh, sufficient consumer protection. We will continue to allow websites that focus on sports betting, fantasy sports, and poker, end quote. Now, as a clear way of hiding the news later, earlier the next morning, like some sort of messenger in the night, which made the long-rumored revenue split announcement, they will be moving all streamers to a 50-50 split. Now, most streamers were, uh, were already at this split, but the highest streamers, somewhere around the top 10% of streamers, were able to negotiate a deal of around 70-30, of course, the split favoring them, but that would be gone in uh, as of June 20, uh, 2023. Now, there is a lengthy blog post you can go read for full details on how they'll justify this change. So read up there if you'd like most of it. But that could be summed up to, quote, increasing costs mainly to video hosting, end quote. Now, we are somehow not done as yet amidst the announced split. Twitch senior vice president of global creators, Constance Knight, left the company the same day the split came um, uh, to light. According to Bloomberg, as I was researching the story, this puts Twitch at losing their chief content officer, their chief operating officer, and their senior vice president, all in this year alone. Jeez. Twitch, an American live streaming company focused on video games, started out small as just Justin TV then eventually spinning off in June of 2011 to become Twitch and is seen as the place for live streaming video games and entertainment. Hmm. Okay, so multiple avenues we can touch with this. And also this story also spiraled to uh, allegations and sexual allegations, uh, not people involved in the main story, but I didn't find that pertinent to the actual thing. So if you want to read about yeah. that, you can. I didn't find it relevant to the story, but 
people were accusing others and other gambling streams. So I got out of hand very fast, but this is what I gathered. Uh, it seems like uh, clearly the senior vice president was not in favor of this and they just left. Uh, it seems like uh, the others saw writing on the wall early in the year and also left. Uh, and it seems that Twitch has been pretty much of a pretty big um, tizzy right now as not only are they announcing this change of a 50-50 split to everyone, which I don't know why you'd bite the hand of your top 10%. That's the where you probably make the majority of your money if probably get greater than I would assume 50% of your money is probably made with the top 10. Who knows? Maybe it is a quantity over quality thing over there, but I doubt it. Two... I, if I was a top 10 streamer, why would I not move to YouTube gaming in this now? Uh, because as far as I understand, they offer a 70-30 for anybody. So mm-hmm. why not immediately be like, all right, bye. Now, I do hear from a lot of people, people who use the platform, that YouTube gaming isn't the best. They have like a little lackluster chat experience compared to Twitch, and it's just not as ingrained as well. So maybe that is the majority of the reason. But if I was Pokimane or uh, Hassan Abi, I'd be like, all right, well, Probably April, I'll be gone. Uh, so peace out. Uh, I'll go over there. And also, important to note, although this isn't the same thing, Patreon and OnlyFans offer 80-20 split. So yeah. <laughs> that's even uh, more interesting. Of course, Patreon, not a video hosting site, but just interesting to point out that uh, it is interesting to, to bring those things up. Uh, very quick, I'll end on this, and I'll, I'll throw it to you. Uh, Twitch definitely seems to be drowning. They offered a try to justify it as video hosting is becoming more popular. They're under Amazon Web Service, which is owned by, you guessed it, Amazon, which owns Twitch. So why are they having to pay themselves in theory? Because now they are integrated into Amazon. This is not a purchase that left Twitch as a separate entity. They are under Amazon. So that should be a basic Mm. write-off in their books and not a full-on payment to their own web service. So that, if that is true, is is so egregiously dumb uh, that is shocking. Of course, there's operating costs, but if they're actually paying for the actual video web service, who Amazon is on another one with that. So <laughs> that will be shocking if that is true. Uh, it is expensive to keep these things up, but to bite the hand that the whole reason that you are relevant seems preposterous to me, at least. Uh, Emmett, I want to throw it to you. Uh, I miss Mixer. <laughs> I, I, I was so sad when Mixer left because I was like, competition. Yes. Like, yeah. yes. Like, Twitch was even more of a, a monopoly back then. YouTube gaming kind of is helping that now. But I was so excited. I was like, okay, Microsoft, you know, kind of has money to burn. So maybe they'll stick around and be open with the wallet. And maybe they'll take some losses to help fund this thing. And they clearly closed that. And in hindsight, I said it was at the time to try and uh, use the money to justify other purchases. I think that's clearly true now because their probably gaming division didn't have so much money if they wanted to buy back then. It would have been Bethesda. I thought it was going to be WB Games uh, back in those times. But they obviously bought Bethesda. And of course, leading to now, they were probably able to justify the activision purchase with you know not having as much overhead in mixer but yeah i i miss mixer as well thank you for bringing that up yeah yeah that's the first thing i thought when i saw this news like they seemed like especially when they had ninja on the platform and i was starting to follow like one or two mixer only streamers that were like oh there's a niche here and there's there's less eyes to fight for so you're more likely to get some of them um so yeah i missed that I think this whole news with Twitch doing all this stuff, like you said, it's going to result in a lot of people going to YouTube. I know especially one bonus that I like about YouTube streaming is because they already have had the conversations with mu- with the music industry, your video isn't going to get taken down yep. if you decided to play uh, licensed music during it. It will just get, sure, it'll take the ad revenue, but at least it stays up. But at least it's so. Safe. Yeah, so, you know, there's a lot of benefits to using YouTube. I understand for YouTube streaming specifically, they don't quite have all the features that Twitch that Twitch has. They don't quite have all the rating and all the chat features that people have co- become accustomed to on Twitch, and I do think that's something they're working on. But, yeah, I feel like YouTube is just trying to beef up their feature set so that once this change does happen and people are losing out on money, then, yeah, it's just an easy one to switcheroo and, you know, everyone's over there. Um, yeah, I don't get why I understand from reports that I've been seeing, 
it's a lot of people at the top of Twitch, like people on the Amazon side of Twitch rather than the actual company. Yeah. I feel like a lot of this is them being like, hey, you have to be more profitable because like any big corporation, they will kill a smaller business under them. Even if the entire business is making money, they will kill something under them if that isn't profitable in and of itself. Yep. So I I don't know if Twitch is in danger of that, but I feel like they're trying to make that more profitable, trying to bulk that up, and it's going to lead to them ostracizing a lot of their biggest users. It's going to lead to a lot of their fans leaving. And yeah, Twitch, Twitch can't sit here and do these changes when they've been complacent for so long and haven't done too much new, extra exciting things where YouTube... They have so many exciting features on there because they have been around so long and they've been able to work things out. Stuff like the music, stuff like on Twitch, if you get into a live stream, there's no way to scrub back. You got to wait until the whole thing's done. Yep. But on YouTube, just go back a couple minutes if you really want to. Yep. It's just really cool. Watching. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. They got a lot to learn. <laughs> so we'll see if they learn any of it. It's clear that they needed more revenue in the next fiscal year because the timing is just too perfect. Uh, June of next year, yeah, just about where your physical year starts, you want to get 20% more money from your top 10%. Yeah, yeah, you, you definitely need to justify more money, so that's the way you're going to do it. And uh, love love the timing. I love it, because they literally announced this as if this was some sort of like uh, even exchange. Like, we banned gambling, and we are taking your split. <laughs> like, that was fucking yeah, hilarious. They only kind of banned gambling, too, because, like, they do, yeah. still up. Like, yeah. There's they, still caveats they, to that. So. Apparently, I couldn't figure this out because, no, uh, th this isn't making fun of them, but they weren't very clear on what specifically they wanted gambling. Like, they brought up crypto gambling and all these things, which I don't even, I didn't even know was real. So, <laughs> I, I'm not I like in, intelligent. <laughs> I'm not intelligent enough on that to speak on it, but. I don't know if it was specifically the crypto weird stuff that they were doing. It's apparently, there was also some illegal gambling th sites that they were using. So it's, it's I don't... similar to the CSGO controversy from a couple years back. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so okay. So it, I would assume this this satisfies them. Maybe I don't know. I have I don't follow these people regularly, so I don't know if this is good enough. Maybe they'll still strike and be like, "No, we want all gambling," which they they're crazy if that that's going to happen. I'm sure. I'm sure they don't want to now cut more money out of out of their thing. So that's not going to happen. Um, I mean, for God's sakes, you can. There's still porn on Twitch, so I I, I would highly doubt they they care about uh, uh this gambling. So yeah, technically, I guess so. <laughs> I was thinking like, there's not that on Twitch, and I thought about it, and I'm like, yeah, well, I know some folks who are known just for how they look. <laughs> what was funny Which is, is fine. Get your money, but hey, get your money. Good. I don't care. Do do you? Uh, and uh, this was also brought up. That they banned gambling, but didn't ban the chick that clearly had sex on stream, which is very funny. Um, I don't know if you saw that, but they she had a seven day ban for getting banged. You couldn't see anything, but of course it was heavily implied what was going on. Um, and she did it again, I think. So like, no way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched it. Apparently she did it again, and nothing happened. So that's remarkable. Yeah. So who knows? But here, there we go. Uh, uh yeah, that you know what? Yeah, I don't have anything else to add. Very strange. I'll be curious to see if they stick around as being relevant as as much as they are because it really is the place for game streaming. Certainly, certainly. So I'm going to open this story with first an apology from last week. So I did add in the description if you watch last week's video that I actually missed a story. If you watch the last video, I actually had to move a story because I had it improperly placed. I accidentally skipped over it. So this is actually a story from last week that we're going to quickly go over because it's pretty much outdated now, but it would be wrong to not highlight a very newsworthy thing on the show. Well, Sean Layden has made a move that sent waves through the industry, announced via a LinkedIn post. Sean Layden, former president and CEO of Sony Interactive Entertainment prior to Jim Ryan, from April 2014 to September 30th, 2019, has said he has joined as strategic advisor at Tencent, the mega quad out of camera with, uh, sorry, the mega conglomerate out of China with open ties to the CCP. Here's the LinkedIn post. Quote, I'm delighted to share that I have recently joined Tencent Games as a strategic advisor. In this new role, I hope to advise, assist, and support the team at Tencent as they deepen their activities and commitments within the industry to which I have devoted the majority of my career. We're in an epoch-defining moment in gaming and interactive entertainment. There are many possible roads ahead, but only a few are profound, broadening, inclusive, edifying, inspiring, and or sustainable. I am thrilled to continue this journey of discovery and thank Tencent for the opportunity, end quote. 
This is even more surprising to me, given that the previous week he also replied to a tweet from Steven Satillo discussing monopolies and games. We covered this in the prior week that uh, he replied to Steven Satillo's uh, inquiry about EA CEO asking his staff to be careful as we don't want a mega conglomerate entering the industry with mon monopolistic practices. I actually had this conversation with ISO Christian on who it might be talking about. Uh, I theorized it may be Apple. He theorized that it might be Tencent or someone else of that nature or Xbox. You know, we you don't know. It was meant to not be specific on who it was. Uh, I, I'll be quick because this has already been covered by everyone now. Uh, this is incredibly disheartening. Sean Layden, uh, I actually had a lot of respect for. He ran Sony, I think, very well. And he took them out of kind of that PC, PS3 era that... Uh, that everyone talks about now as um, uh, the the full of themselves Sony, the the arrogant Sony, the the one that was like, uh, you, you, we made it, so you'll buy it. Uh, specifically when PS3 launched, and he kind of like brought them up to the PS4 era that we now know and look uh, back pretty fondly on. And hopefully, we're not going back to the previous PS3 era as we are talking right now. But uh, I had a lot of respect for him, and he just seems like a hypocrite. You can't reply to a a tweet being snide about we all know who they're talking about monopoly and then join tencent my man so uh you are a multi-millionaire you don't need the money i don't have any justification for you doing this and this is uh incredibly sad as he clearly has no standards uh please emmett do you have anything that that would be my uh, uh, only thing i add to the conversation probably <laughs> not too much uh it's one of these things where it's hard to say they it's less that they own a bunch of stuff and more that they have their tendrils their money in a bunch of stuff to where it's still concerning to the same degree but i think to a layman and i don't think sean Layden is a layman at all not at all he's very I, he's probably one of the smartest people yeah, in the industry probably know. yeah he would he would definitely know better so you know that's definitely i don't know if that's even a devil's advocate thing really the thing that hits me the most is looking at this position a consultancy role i imagine this is like when uh reggie uh from nintendo was on that uh consulting board for games uh, yeah back. yeah i i imagine similar to that where i can't imagine he's directly talking to like the ceo of tencent or anything crazy i think it's just asking him for advice on stuff on you know what what to do with the current portfolio they have i don't think he's going to be out here like being the one day at go to to be like hey what company should we buy oh go after montreal or whatever or you know whatever developer i, I don't think it's going to be that i think it's a very lightweight role he is taking i don't think it's much i think he probably took the job because hey it's a paycheck and also it's a paycheck that doesn't require a lot of effort compared to running the entirety of playstation <laughs> at his last job um so i can imagine that you know it was just an easy thing and once again, I, I'm one of those folks who's like, get your money. And even with that tweet, yes, that's hypocritical. But at the same time, you can't help but help someone who doesn't deserve the help. <laughs> In his case, he specifically was like being wary of uh, of these massive conglomerations and then joined a massive conglomeration uh, in Monopoly. So Probably the like, worst one out of all of them. Yeah, you, you definitely, you kind of fucked yourself there. But at the same time, I'm like, hey, I complain about all this shit about corporations and stuff. And I complain about, hey, the video game doesn't have any unions, but the place I work at right now, union free. And they're only like that because everyone, they treat everyone from the outside looking in so far pretty well. So it's all good until it's not, basically, is what I'm trying to say. And if he's going to join them, perhaps he'll keep them from doing something crazy. But like they literally, they don't just have tendrils in video games. They have tendrils in like Discord and yep. WeChat and all this shit. So I think yeah, they own we WeChat. I'm pretty yeah, sure. Yeah, WeChat is completely theirs. But yeah. like Discord didn't know they had money in it until I was like looking it up. And, yep. you know, of, of course they have pictures and video and all this stuff. They so. have tens and tens of, I mean, dozens of different mm -hmm. investments. We could have a whole show on how much they own. And once again, this um, is because. China is just a massive empire. Well, they're not actually an empire, but they are no, a massive, but they're massive country. Man. Yeah. I mean, you know, however they want to categorize it, they're a massive country with a lot of capital and they don't treat their citizens in ways that other countries, most other countries in the world would consider great. 
So, yeah, they have uh, open concentration yeah. camps that they pretend like they don't exist, but they have straight up Muslims mm-hmm. in and they re-educate them. So yeah, I would also agree that yeah, they're pretty morally corrupt. I just find it incredibly, incredibly. You he knows. I mean, there, I don't have anything else that he knows better. I, yeah. I'm, pre- I'm not. I assume I'm preaching to the wire. Yeah, he know. I'm sure he knows better, but also like, it's a check. <laughs> He, he, I'm I just I, in my head I'm gonna be more mad at the people I, I'm gonna be more mad at the CEO of Tencent than the people who decide to take a paycheck from him. I guess, and it's probably I guess I can head. understand. <laughs> yeah, an increasingly transparent industry where seeing developers at people can fly, most notably for the game Outriders, and not seeing their official site as of September 23rd, Mega Publisher Take Two will be terminating a development and publishing agreement by means of mutual understanding. That was all that was given. This agreement, as stated by People Can Fly, is printing to an unannounced game codenamed Project Dagger, a new action-adventure IP that has been uh, been in development for two years and was being worked at People Can Fly's team in New York. They went on to note Take-Two did not buy out the IP as outlined in their agreement, so they rem- rem- uh, remain sole owner and would continue to develop the project. Surprisingly, later on, they announced that this is one of seven projects at work at People Can Fly, stating Project Gemini with Square Enix, self-published projects Bifrost and Victoria. Concept phases are undergo for Project Red and two VR games, Green Hell VR and VR game based on an existing IP. Uh, presumably, it would be something like Bulletstorm VR or something maybe more unlikely like 2004's Painkiller. Their current plan is to continue releasing a title every year, either self-published or co opt they also have over 550 people employed across both uh, across sorry the world. Um, it's yeah, I saw places in I believe Russia, Europe, Canada, America. They, they're everywhere. So they're 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 huge now. Um, uh, a couple of things I'll add and I'll throw it to you. I, I it, it was interesting to see that they actually plan to try and release a title every year. That's incredibly ambitious. I'll see if, how that works out for them. Uh, the existing IP uh, VR game, I, I could only really see them making a Bulletstorm VR. Everything else, I was like, there's no way they're making a VR game about these things. Of course, Outriders is a third person. I don't think they'd do that unless it's some sort of experience. Uh, Bulletstorm yeah. is a perfect translation to a VR game. So I imagine that's probably uh, what uh, will be coming out. And I assume it will be coming out for PSVR 2. Um, and yeah, that's really all I have to add. I thought it, the, my favorite thing about this is they just straight up just told us. It was very cool to get this kind of very open, like, yeah, this is what we're working on. Uh, one of our projects fell through. We're going to be uh, uh, work on it probably. Uh, I think they actually even said they were going to self-publish it now. So uh, kind of works out for them in, in their favor, sort of, that Take-Two's gone because they lose that split. Although unclear if the actual letter of intent, uh, sorry, the actual uh, agreement was that they have to back pay in some sort of royalties uh, because I think they were paid up front. So they actually probably have to either pay them back or they have some sort of royalty agreement with them to continue game. Who knows? Um, oh, and, and they did say, sorry. So they said, depending on, so it, so it's clear that they haven't decided if they will either self publish or they will find a new publisher. Yeah. From, from what I was reading, it seems like 2k gave them money to work on the game that they got to repay most, if not all of that money back to them. Yeah. And then they can keep everything else from there. But um, yeah, I, this was a weird thing to see because at first I saw this and I was like, what's going on with this game that makes take two want to have cold feet on this one. Yeah. But at the, at the same time, I feel like a developer like people can fly while they are doing very well. I mean, they, they got that gears of war judgment money. They got that yep. outriders money, which was doing really good. Like they're not doing bad by any means, but for a developer like them and for a company like take two who have their, you know, the sports games every year with the, with the basketball and, you know, Grand Theft Auto's on the horizon somewhere, and you know, Bioshock is probably coming back soon as well. They have enough big things that they're paying money for to where they probably felt like, all right, we we don't really need a people can fly project right now. Yeah. And I I'm willing to bet that it's not a problem with the project. I'm willing to bet it's oh, so it won't be done 2025, it's 2026. And by yeah. that time, their Bioshock they're planning is coming out or their GTA is coming out. So they said, all right, we don't really need this in the portfolio anymore. We can just terminate this. And I'm sure people can fly. They have enough resources where they can, excuse me, where they can put it out themselves. So I'm interested to see what this is. They make good games. I like Outriders. I like Bulletstorm. I think I will like Judgment when I play that eventually. But yeah, they're they're a decent studio. They're going to be fine off of this. Yeah, I don't. Need, yeah, I don't even think this is probably a worry for them, as as their other six projects will probably be make money. I will say, I do f- feel like I remember 
them announcing via a statement that they actually didn't seem to make any money off Outriders because they never received any royalties from it. So now True. that was when it launched. So that could be it could be va- vastly different now. They could have made some money, of course, on uh, back sales or, of course, when they released the new expansion, which I believe was paid. Yeah, that was a paid expansion. Yeah, so paid expansion. who know? I mean, who knows? Uh, they could they could have made money off that. Yeah, I think it's a case of like Square Enix was like, you're not making any money until all the money you owe us. From yes, the is paid off. Yeah. yeah. So In assumably they haven't made money yet, unless, of course, the statement I said prior is true. I'm sure they've made money, but not as much as they could have. Oh, yeah, I'm sure <laughs> not. They didn't have to pay for Square. I'm sure that influenced them wanting to get out of this this deal, too, because mm-hmm. they got to pay all that up front to take two and still not get money months after release. Then nah, get all now, I will be curious to see after this point. Because they are in another agreement with Square, so clearly it wasn't that bad. Um, but I'm curious if they're going to start just self-publishing from now on after a while. They definitely have enough people to do it now. It's just to see if they have the capital, because it's that's a lot of money, and it's a lot of things that you don't think of that cost money, like random stuff like it's pizzas. so much yeah, pizzas. Yeah, pizza parties. Uh, <laughs> well, there's just so much paperwork and, and marketing, yeah. and there's so much that you have to justify. So if they get a taste for it, they could focus solely on just self-publishing, although, again, that's very expensive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we'll see. We'll see. Good luck for them, though. I found this, and I wanted to quickly go over it. This is another thing where I'm, I didn't do a write-up because it, it didn't seem appropriate because, again, it, I would just be taking what they're writing down here. So uh, I'm going to read uh, kind of through the midway of this. So this is from Xbox Wire. Xbox launched its Project Amplify to support black youth interested in gaming industry careers. Uh, this is partway through the article. Gaming is a leading form of entertainment, but to date, only 2% of professionals in the video game industry are black, compared to 13% of the U.S. population. In partnership with members of the black communities at Xbox, Xbox is looking to up-level that statistic and close this gap by promoting pop lines for black people and youth across the gaming industry. Introducing Project Amplify, a video series that aims to magnify black voices within Xbox to inspire, educate, and motivate youth across the U.S., to aspire towards uh, careers in the gaming industry through real-life storytelling from black leaders and employees across Xbox ecosystem. Project Amplify features 14 black employees from across Xbox as they each share advice, insights into their current roles, and highlights from their time within the gaming industry. This video series is meant to educate youth on the diversity of roles within the gaming industry while highlighting some of the black people who are working in those roles daily. On behalf of the black communities at Xbox, Coley's shared their personal stories in the video series on their journey into video gaming inclusivity. Uh, sorry, gaming industry inclusive of, and there's a bunch of this called Growing Up. Uh, oh, sorry, these are actual full statements. Uh, if you want the full, full statements, yeah, yeah, so you can head over. There's actually um, a little teaser on Xbox Wire. First off, that's a kind of dope logo for that. Let's be real. Very that's, dope That's logo. pretty cool. Uh, that's pretty cool. But I just wanted to highlight this. This is very cool. Uh, I, I, anything supporting anyone is awesome. And this is just one of the main things that is very cool. I can speak to when I remember when I was school, uh, the STEM became a big thing. They always had like these videos like prepped in. I find that like that, that's an easy way to inspire anyone is, Hey, you can work at Xbox. Here's like, uh, people that look like you working at Xbox. And there's like a cool video that plays. I, I remember it like it was yesterday, like the career videos that they played and like getting you ready like to go to college and things and this is a cool thing i found um it looks yeah. like uh the initiative will launch xbox is partnering with the 2022 revolt summit <laughs> xt at and for a two-day event september 24th 25th to reach students and gaming and through these through on-site industry panels yeah yeah i i like the fact that this is a thing uh when when here's i like that this exists um, but I mean, similar to how I grew up where in a black household, especially when for the longest time, especially when games were first a thing, it wasn't really thought of as an activity that black kids would do like, like growing up, you know, oh, he likes video games. He's either he's weird or he's just like othered in some way. Um, so that was a thing that I had when I was growing up as a kid, but as I got older, that was less of a thing. Once they started making like Madden games and it's like, oh, it's a sport. That's something we do. And so then that started becoming more of a thing that we got associated with. And then, you know, Call of Duty is a thing that we all played out. Like that's a common thing, you know, these shooters and whatnot to the point where now it's no longer abnormal to, you know, see someone black working in the industry. You know, you got your Khalif Adams spawn on me. 
folks like that. Yep. And in the development side, there's a lot of names too, you know, Sarah Bond and people like that. For me though, I the first for the first time I ever saw a black person working in video games, like press side or developer side, anything. The episode of Core where they were talking about Fat Princess. Oh wow. Whoever, whoever was talking about, I forget the man's name, but whoever was talking about Fat Princess on that episode, the first black man I ever saw in video games. I had been watching G4 for years up to that point. Not a single black person the entire time on any side, yeah. press or anything. And yeah, that one episode of Core, I saw that. And then from then on, up until that point, I wanted to be an animator, but I didn't like drawing. I just liked Pixar movies. So I was yeah. like, oh, I just like that. But then I saw him there and I'm like, oh, this is a possibility. And then that's when the seed was planted to put me here. So that's awesome. Like it's it's good to see people doing those jobs. And it's good to also programs like this are going to change the cultural aspects that kind of lead people to because if you just work in if you're in poverty your whole life, you're not necessarily saying I want to work a job that is what I want as a passion. You're saying I want the job that pays the most. I want the job that gets me out of the situation. And that's the priority rather than something yeah. you have a passion about. So projects like these and things like these are going to ignite those passions a little bit more and put people in positions that they like as a job rather than somewhere they need to be to just make ends meet. So got to love that. That's always something I approve of. Yeah, yeah. To quickly uh, bring up what you kind of st uh, started with, I remember when I was a kid in middle school, and it, and it, it, it shifts so quickly. I remember in middle school, and you know where I grew up, it was a predominantly black neighborhood. And in middle school, I remember hanging out with my black friends, talking about anime and things, and we would always have either another black person or just someone randomly would be like, "What? You're like that's not very black, or or that's not like that's uh, or uh, be they more black." Other and and it yeah. was always a strange thing that happened and then as soon as high school hit i i feel like you're right on the money there it kind of became less othered than it was mm -hmm. and that and like anime became more popular anime actually i think was one of the main drivers of of having like a social event that kids talked about anime video games probably more now because of fortnite i mean i think is literally the one thing that probably brought literally everyone in school together yeah. gaming's probably cool now versus when i was growing up you didn't really talk about it that much, and if you did, it was with your group. You didn't really like it wasn't but an open was discussion. Like but like nine an, p.m. So anime everyone. was yeah, anime was like the one thing that I remember. Like oh yeah, everyone talked about Dragon Ball Z, Naruto. I mean, I remember going to high school and just gushing about like the latest Naruto Shippuden episode or something. So yeah, um, but yeah, that was just a, a memory that you sparked as soon as you started talking about that. Um, yep. Boondocks too. That's bla that's black yeah. as fuck right there. Yep. Uh, yeah. But to, yeah, oh, and to quickly harken back, I do hope that some sort of funding uh, goes towards inner cities, because I feel like yeah. that is where predominantly where we're going to find the next talent, because they're being wasted in these terrible schools in the inner cities. They're always overlooked, especially in funding and things. It's sad that I'm hoping Microsoft and not our fucking government does something about it, but... It would be oh, cool yeah. to also have some sort of initiative with this to maybe like specifically go to inner city schools and try to help them out because there's always a, a vastly improportionate amount of black people there. So hopefully maybe that's in the talk somewhere that we try and uplift people in largely looked down communities. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Yeah. But yeah, this is a good first step. Nonetheless, it is. Blazeboot creator. Toshimichi Mori has left Arc System Works after 19 years. Now, this is his statement via Gamatsu. Not much else was added. This is pretty much all I found given this story. Quote, I have something to report to all the users. This is recorded from Japanese. So who knows what that actually says? I, Toshimichi Mori, have left Arc System Works, the company I worked at for many years. I first joined Arc System Works as working on Guilty Gear X as an employee of PickPack. And I cherish many of the experiences I have had during my 20 years there. Whether it was working for various fighting game titles, developing my own title, Blaze Blue, or connecting with many of our users, I have nothing but gratitude towards the staff of Arc System Works and all those who have worked with me, as well as the users who supported us. Thank you for the bottom of my heart. I will depart from Arc System Works. This may cause some feelings of anxiety, especially among fans of the Blaze Blue series. For this, I sincerely apologize. You can tell this is very Japanese. At the moment, I'm thinking of creating and de delivering a game for the users in some way, and I'm going to focus my strength on that endeavor. Your support would be much appreciated. And it's signed, of course, Toshimichi Mori, end quote. 
Hmm. I don't have much to add. I'm not an Arc System Works fan. I thought that was just noteworthy that they are losing something. But he says he wants to make another game. So maybe he'll make his either his own studio. I know NetEase is trying to incentivize, especially uh, after they uh, had the Yakuza creator leave and make his own studio. Maybe they float some money to him and have him create his own studio to make a fighting game. Who knows? But that's merely theorizing. I have no idea what this man's going to yeah. do. I mean, speaking of that studio from the Yakuza director... I'm sure Tencent will be glad to snatch them up and give them a studio and yep. make some games for us. So yep. All these conglomerates, I'm sure, are happy to get more under their under their umbrella. But yeah, good hell of a career over at Arc System Works. I yep. know, you know, a lot of good games they made there. So, you know, shout out to him. But I'm sure we won't this ain't the last we've heard of him. No, no. Certainly, certainly. Delivered exclusively by Tom Henderson and Insider Gaming. I still don't know what the site is. I think it's his own that he made or maybe someone else's. Yeah, out. it's another site he made. I think he's okay. making new sites to stay, I don't know, on top of things. It's weird, but this definitely is site and he's legit. He's he's getting more and more uh, of a name. So I'm like, oh, how does no one buy you? Like, how does IGN not truckload of money just show to you? Like, you want to fucking work for us, bro? <laughs> I- I'll tell you what, they don't do that because every other staffer there is like, oh, you gave him a lot of money to be here, huh? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Uh, his sources are stating, uh, let me just start over. Delivered exclusively by Tom Henderson and Insider Gaming, his sources are stating Disney uh, wanting their Star Wars franchise to have two games a year, specifically one major AAA title and one smaller title every physical year. This aligns pretty well with what we know is coming from the media conglomerate working with several different studios to make games on the franchise. As of right now, we know uh, of these titles. Amy Hennig's game from Skydance Media. Untitled FBS from Respawn. Open World game from Ubisoft Massive. Star Wars Eclipse Quantic Dream. Knights of the Old Republic remake from uh, Saber Interactive, of course, originally Aspire. Jedi Survivor, which is the Fallen Order sequel from Respawn. Star Wars Hunters, which is a Zynga title. Untitled strategy game, also from Respawn. Also outlined in the article and reported on by me last year, there is also a rumored Mandalorian game, but nothing substantial has come from these rumors, other than a faked gameplay leak from Reddit last year. We actually covered that, too. That was uh, pretty fake. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I want to cut this to you, because I've kind of dominated the conversations in the beginning. Uh, what, what do you think of all this when you first read this? Um, first off, I didn't realize it was they wanted a new Star Wars game every six months. I thought it was just a Disney game because I saw Amy Henning's game from Skydance. And I was like, oh, yeah, the Black Panther Captain America one. And Maybe I mistyped. Now, so let me double check on that. That is a good point. Yeah. Because unless, hey, Amy Henning, big studio, they know it says Amy Henning has a Star Wars game in development. Yes. So yes. It says that in the article. So, wow. Didn't know that. Okay. Two, two cool titles. Yeah. Like, yeah, I guess you'll get a chicken shot at that. But yeah, um, as far as this, it makes me a little nervous because we used to be at a point where for Disney and Marvel games, whenever they, for the longest time, you know, PS2, PS3 generation and backwards, you got a game with the movie. Uh, and that's pretty much how it worked. And it wasn't really a monumous, monumental game release because it was really just marketing for the movie at that point. But late ps3 to ps4 generation when you got a video game based off of one of these characters you know batman arkham was an event on its own uh spider-man ps4 an event on its own um and i think i'm gonna miss that because with how now that disney has finally figured out okay we know how to get these relationships going we know how to give ip to other studios and make something on a regular clip we're gonna be seeing a lot more of these star wars games and I'm someone who I already don't care about Star Wars, really, uh, not to bring up this dead horse, but uh, after, what's the one that came out? Force Awakens? Yeah. I was like, all right, I never need to care about this franchise ever again. So for me personally, I don't really care. Um, Somehow Emperor what, Palpatine is back. The yeah, all just the entire that writing. at the end. What the fuck are we doing? But um, yeah, the only good thing for me is that now I can pick and choose. Thank God I'm not someone who cares about Star Wars as a franchise because <laughs> now I can say, oh, I like Respawn. I'm going to see what that FPS is. Oh, I like Respawn. I'm going to see if Fallen Order 2 is any better. Um, you know, I, I can pick and choose based off of the studios I care about rather than having to slavishly watch everything, consume everything. I can just pick and choose. So 
that's one good thing, I suppose. So it's not putting all your eggs in one basket every five years. And then if it doesn't hit, it doesn't hit. But hey, at least I'll have something here. And I like to see what those smaller titles are going to be. Because most of these titles they have listed here, like these are triple a yeah. big deal things with maybe the exception of knights of the old republic in that zynga game as well but hey if we get more stuff like tron identity i think that's a really healthy thing for the star wars ip and franchise to do give me some weird indie stuff that's out of left field agreed uh, going quickly back to what you just brought up is like the ti smaller titles every year yeah pretty much everything here isn't really a smaller title so i'm at, what i assume smaller title was a nice way of saying mobile game so I don't know if that's yeah. true. Maybe the Untitled Strategy game is a mobile title from Respawn. Could happen. They do have a, a mobile division there that. now, but don't it's they have? True, but they made Apex yeah. Legends mobile. I know. I I doubt it too, but maybe Apex it is. Legends mobile was an out. They outsourced most of that, and Respawn kind of more or less consulted. So I wouldn't count that. But yeah, the Zynga game. They're talking about it as if, as a console game, but it is going to be on mobile as well. Yeah. So that Zynga game's definitely smaller. I imagine what's the other one I said? Maybe uh, Eclipse is like that small, although their budget definitely won't be. Yeah, Eclipse is not a small. Th that's going to be a big deal game. Knights of the Old Republic remake. I imagine that's yeah, going to end up being maybe yeah. closer to a double A game, like a THQ Nordic tier rather than a big massive triple A tier game. So yeah, we'll see. Yeah, and to quickly bring up, um, seeing Untitled FPS respawn Entertainment. It just brings a smile to my face. And oh, it being yeah, in Star Wars is pretty cool. That's pretty cool. And it being single player Ooh. and possibly not a battle royale, thank God. Oh yes, yeah. My fun. God, please. Yeah. I so got, I, hey, I got Titanfall 2 running on my Steam Deck finally, so I'm I'm back nice. in the trenches. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So hopefully that I'm excited for Jedi Survivor. Uh pretty much I'll try everything. Of course, not Star Wars Hunters. The strategy game is solely dependent on how good it is. Interesting that they went to respawn for that. Uh I I'm Curious why they didn't see if Fire Axis wanted to do something. Maybe they were just too busy. I, but I guarantee you that's just them wanting to work with Respawn again and Respawn themselves being like, let's diversify again. Yeah. Strategy. Let's try some weird stuff because Apex mm -hmm. Legends was probably weird when they were making it. So I, I oh, assume yeah. they're and open to making weird stuff. Yeah, now look at it. Yep. Uh, and of course, uh, Eclipse uh, Quantic has been bought by NetEase. So. True. Who knows? Plus, it, it, that game's not coming out until 2028 anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're still trying to make the damn game. Yeah. Or attract talent to make it. <laughs> yeah. No one wants to work there. Yeah. Date updates. We're getting to date updates now. Skull and Bones has been delayed to March 9th, 2023. Again. Again. This game refuses to come out. There's just no way this is going to be good. Now I can play God of War. <laughs> yeah. On the same day. Yeah. I, I don't know what I, don't, I can't imagine what they were thinking of announcing that date. Whoop de doo. Oh, well. Oxen Free 2 has moved their release date. They are going to be moving their release window to 2023. Of course, a bit late, but they did announce that they are not releasing this year. They did not specify specifically when, though. Of course, Oxen Free game will be good. Night School Studios, of course, now bought by uh, Netflix. Yeah. It's still wild to think about, but yeah, that's true. It is weird. And also, I, I wouldn't be shocked if this is to work uh, to release it synonymously on Netflix. And that's why they had to uh, push it. Mm -hmm. The Scorn release date was moved forward to October 14th. Get excited. Of course, Game Pass. If you have Game Pass, you can just play the game. Scorn game of the year. All right, maybe not, but it's <laughs> going to be cool. <laughs> uh, very phallic. Sackboy Big Adventure is coming to PC. We already covered that. October 27th. Wild Hearts. This is the game we talked about prior. Will be released February 17th, 2023. It will be coming to PS5, Xbox Series S and X, and PC. Steam, Epic Games Store, and Origin. Uh, a couple details highlighted. I believe I got this from Nibelian. New IP. Um, instead of Tukadin to appeal to a bigger audience. The hunting style game with crafting elements. Zone based. Up to three players for co-op. EA is going to help with publishing in dev for about four years there will be a new gameplay trailer on october 5th uh, very curious on this i was of course an idiot and thought this was a hunting game as in like hunting not monster hunter like game uh so oh, it's very thought this was Cabela's. <laughs> it just said hunting so i was like is this some sort of feudal fantasy hunting game and of course From i didn't get to specific yeah exactly i was like what's well, so fucking weird of course i didn't wrap it around specifically to yes it is a hunting game but it's like big monster hunter like combat. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I have, of I'll course, say... I'm an idiot, so don't listen to me. <laughs> I wouldn't say all that, but I will say for this, uh, I am honestly surprised this thing's coming so soon. I'm they only announced Barry. the partnership between Koei Tecmo and EA said, hey, we're working together like a couple weeks ago, maybe like three weeks ago. And here we are about a month ago, and they're showing full-on gameplay with a release date for less than six months away. Did not expect that. Uh, it looks interesting, but it also looks like, just looking at the trailer, it looks like a Western game that was made to try and appeal to the Eastern audience. It interesting. feels like that aggressively, um, which we'll see how that works. I, I don't know if the bullshit meter goes off really heavily over there in Asia, but... We'll see. Um, but it looks fine. Uh, I don't think I'm going to play it on launch unless it's like a Game Pass thing, but it looks like it's quality enough. Yeah, it looks, it does air a sense of quality to it. Will it make money? I don't know. Monster Hunter World became Capcom's most powerful game they ever released. So I'm assuming that is what incentivized a lot of this. So I'll be curious to see if this does good at all, if people care. I, I as soon as I realized, oh, it's Monster Hunter, I'm not playing it. I wouldn't have played it either way. But I, I'm just not a Monster Hunter guy. I tried Worlds. I just was not into it at all. So it, it, it's one of those games where it looks cool. I, I just it's not for me. Yeah, the combat in this one looks a little bit more actiony, more yes. like the Koei Tecmo games I'm familiar with. Yeah. And if that's the case, I might get with this one. But I'm not gonna guarantee anything until I see more gameplay on the fifth. In the fifth, these are your priming game October free games lineup: Fallout 76, Total War, Warhammer 2, Middle Earth, Shadow of War. Glass Masquerade Origins, Loom, Heroes Hour, Horus. Go claim that. You have all of October. Here's your essential titles for October by PS Plus, of course. If you are an essential member, you get all these games. Make sure to grab them. You have to actively grab them to be able to add it to your library. This starts the first Tuesday of every month. Hot Wheels Unleashed. This is your PS4 and PS5 title. Injustice 2 for PS4. Super hot. PS4. Super hot. Very good game. Play it. It's a big mind trip. I loved that game. Now, they did say they would re- announce the premium games. They said late, they were doing that later in the month, which, which is, is literally today, in two days. Tomorrow. So, like, yeah, I'm hoping it's out now. I will quickly look up. It doesn't look like it. So. Yeah, I didn't see anything on Twitter. I've had it open for most of the show, so yeah, I wouldn't hold your breath. yeah, it doesn't look like it. So we don't have as of right now. I'm sure if you look up what the titles are, they're probably live as you're listening. Um, I real really quick add into this segment. Uh, Please, what gold actually dropped? Did um, they? I must have missed it. Yeah, it was super early before even the prime stuff. So it's only two games. They are no longer doing Xbox 360. So correct Portal Two while you can. But uh, Games for Gold next month, it's going to be Windbound and Bomber Crew Deluxe Edition. Those will both be free on October 1st for Windbound and October 16th with uh, Bomber Crew. So gross. Up there. Those are pretty bad. Um, uh, and also, I didn't... Uh, looks cool, but yeah, I don't care. <laughs> I also didn't say... Uh, I didn't cover this in the new story, but uh, PlayStation Stars launched today in Asia. Uh, additional markets will be coming soon so uh i will quickly highlight because i did head over to the blog playstation blog to make sure um cool uh asia is local to, yeah north and south america is october 5th so if that's something you care about october 5th is when you actually get the full release here in the states yeah whoop de doo yeah I we'll guess. see get your nfts get your... oh boy and it's all right and the show just I... like i begin it yeah, a new question. I ask you, of course, what's cute? It's gonna be a TV show, a book, a comic book, a game, some sort of podcast, really anything. Of course, please tell me, Emmett, what do you have queued up? What do I have queued up? Well, I'll say I shared this on Twitter shortly before we started recording, but I did finally take the plunge and it actually finished downloading. I got the ring oh, of oh, shit. on the deck right now. Um, now, here's the thing. Will I have that played by the next time I'm on here? I'm not going to guarantee that because along with Elden Ring, also by Outer Wilds, which I know people don't shut up about. So Outer Wilds, I got to play. Also Neon White, a game that on paper I should love, but haven't really. I've been nervous about playing it, but everyone loves it. So we'll see. Uh, I also picked up Nonita. also picked up the Hong Kong Massacre, all on Switch. And on top of all that, apparently there's an Assassin's Creed uh, sale going on on Steam. So I might fuck around and say, fuck it, I'm going to get Odyssey on, on Steam Deck and go for it. 
um, or any of these other old games too. Odyssey, uh, Black so, yeah. Flag are the two I would recommend to you. Yeah. Oh, Black Flag I love. I've played that before. Fuck yeah, you did. Uh, and, and Origins I love as well. That Origins is my favorite one. Um, or perhaps I'll just download Assassin's Creed 3, which I think I bought a long ass time ago. Wait, you can't buy Assassin's Oh yeah, I forgot they took down like half these games. Um, Hilarious. God damn it. Um, in any case, yeah, I got a lot of Steam Deck stuff uh, loaded up. That's what I'm probably going to be doing next. I still have Saints Row on the back burner. I feel like my lack of desire to play more Saints Row speaks volume. Yeah, but same here. It, yeah, it's once again, it's not bad. I just can't it's find. It's not good enough, though. You know, like it doesn't. Yeah, we got so many games. It doesn't matter if you're good. You have to be kind of great in order to like demand your attention. Exactly, Mundo. So yeah, that's what I got on the docket here, and perhaps I'll start Immortality soon as well because I know people don't shut up about that one too. So yeah, that's on the docket as well. Movies and all that music and other stuff. Whatever it is, what it is. I'm trying to play some games. Damn it, <laughs> <laughs> I need to play something that gets me feeling again. So yeah. That's why I so yeah, we'll see. I don't have too much planned for the weekend. Um, I'm going to be trying to go to Atlanta to watch a comedy show uh, mm-hmm. featuring Joe Rogan. So we're going to try and do that. I don't really have any other plans. It's very up in the air, of course. I live in Georgia, so Hurricane Ian might cancel plans. If it looks bad in the morning, we're probably just going to call it a wash and just be like, eh, it's fine. And just stay yeah. home. Um, it's a long way to drive for a comedy show I'm not gonna yeah lie. it is it is it's an excuse that I, we don't really get out much so like if we find a reason we're like eh, let's do it fuck it so and I, i'm a i'm a homebody so like I, ne- I would never leave this house but my wife's like let's do things i'm like all right whatever so ask me my friends hit me up and i'm like all right i'll come i mean i'm literally <laughs> like i don't really want to do anything i like being here with my tv so mm-hmm. i would probably die if it wasn't for her um Jesus so Christ. i will see the Thank sun for a while for again that's a big question though the hurricane could cancel all of our plans which is honestly fine because that's an excuse to play more games um yeah. here you go i did forget to add in the playstation stars apparently they will give you priority access um for your customer support if you're a high member in the program which is yeah. i can't dastardly. can't believe if that's real <laughs> i can't i can't believe it that's pretty hey, hilarious. Once it comes to America in like a week, we'll find out more about it. Yeah. Um, but aside from that, I don't really know. I heard that they're giving out free ivermectin to every Joe Rogan uh, recipient, so that's going to be very fun. Um, <laughs> what else? Oh, boy. A lot of horse owners in Georgia. Yeah, yeah it's going to be so yeah, much well, horse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's specifically for yeah. horses, too, so it's definitely it's not safe to consume. Um, <laughs> I, knew some, I knew someone that uh, it's a horse medicine. Um, I don't care if you bought the human stuff, but this person specifically bought the horse stuff, not knowing. And uh, I made fun of them because you could die because <laughs> it's very toxic. Um, that's really it. I don't have a big plan for this week. I do want to play Mortality, like you said, but I've been pl- trying to play that for the last month. The Last of Us Part 2 t- uh, Platinum as well as Part 1 was looming over my head. So I f- it was one of those things where every time I played a game, I was like, eh, I should be doing that so I get it over with. Now that that's yeah. done, I feel like my life's free the oyster, so like I feel like I can go to anything. Bingo. Um, aside from that, that's all I got for you guys, uh, achievers. Uh, thank you for listening this far in. Uh, we are sub two hours, which is a big deal with me and Emmett on a show. Woo! Uh, barely, but we did. Barely, <laughs> barely, barely, but we are right there. Um, hopefully, uh, stay safe if you're in Florida and, of course, on the coastal side of Georgia. Um, and we hearts out for anyone in Cuba. Hopefully you guys safe as well. Um, please uh, uh, follow your weather channels and all that stuff. Be safe. It looks like where I am, I'm not going to get hit at all that hard. But again, this thing, it's a hurricanes aren't very much predictable and too, too much of a way. So we could end up getting hit. Who knows? It's been incredibly ominous the last like few days. Like I don't know what it looks like oh, over here at your side, but it just looks gray for the last three days and it's just so creepy. The winds are hitting pretty hard and it's like, Ooh, it feels like a boss fight's about to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely, we haven't had it. It's not gloomy or anything right now, but literally all this morning, just aggressive wind. Yeah. Uh, It's calm right now, but it's just been blowing hard. So we might get a little bit of rain or whatnot, but by the time it gets all the way up here, cause we're like eight hours more North than you. So 
we'll be fine. I'm pretty sure. I, I think you have the least amount to worry pretty much about anybody. And in theory, going to Atlanta, you're technically driving away from the storm. So who knows? Back to Mundo. We'll see. So yeah, we'll see. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Remember, go Chief. Whoop-de-doo.